Wednesday is not today. It's Tuesday. And we are starting today. I almost said it was Wednesday and caught myself right well in the done, middle. Well done, sir. Well done. I can't tell what the fucking day it is anymore. It's Tuesday. It's all that it's cockroach in your LaCroix going to your brain, you, son. See, you're part of the problem. You're part of the problem. I'm the solution, no, You're part friend. of the problem. I'm the solution. Yeah. No. I've always been the solution. Uh, you know really? this. Yeah, solution. You yeah. Mean, you solution on your hair? No. Yeah, I thought you did. I know. I mean, I put lotion up in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what? Right. Not like a hair solution. Yeah, like no, a, I mean, what like, like, solution? Like, you don't know? Hair solution, like for hair loss? No. No, like a, like a gel like or a like, gel. A, like a product. That's, what is it solving? Uh, Problems of messiness. Low flow hair? Yeah. I don't think it's called solution. <laughs> Are you sure? I felt like I was. Remember when like guys would travel around the country in a wagon and be like, we got your hair tonic right, right. here. Right. Yeah. That's, what happened to hair tonic? I don't know. Did I'd like some. Yeah. And, huh. And like, still... oh, brother, where art thou when he's always looking for the Dapper Dan? Yeah. I and think I'll... I have some. And I'm mm. still not, I still. I don't think I'm comfortable with shoe shining. No. I could never get into that. I'm just not comfortable with it. I see But have it... you had your shoe shine before? Like, I'm sure it's person? wonderful, but I, 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 I just, it, there's something weird about it. I don't know. Just like seeing somebody shine someone else's shoe, it's just like. What it's... about rubbing your feet? It's a different thing. Mm-hmm. We talked about mm-hmm. it last week. Because it's not in public. It's or not the... in public. It's like at, air, at airports, you see people with like shiny shoes and shit. I'm like, that's their job. Seems... I know. And I don't take anything <laughs> away from them. It just seems, it, it, it's just like, it better... seems. It's like I get like, turned to Christopher Walken. Get better than that. Get off your knees. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but everybody needs a good shot. I know, I know. And, and, and I'm nothing against the shoe shine people. I just, it just, it just seems. Somebody just got so offended uh, somewhere. I know. In the and, world. I, and they shouldn't. Because the thing is, again, they, they, yeah, the and they put a lot of. They put a lot of. They put a lot of. They put a lot of work into it. It's not that. It's just, I don't know what it is. It's just, I, I look at it and I just. My like, grandfather was a shoe shiner? Yeah. And I'm His not, well, that's, well, that's what I, that, that's what I meant. Which where when I look and I go, you know what? It's just like. Who the fuck is that? The guy's sitting there, just like, who are you? You looking down at this this guy who's shining your shoes? And it's, it's but I know that's not what it is. It's just my weirdo thing. I get that you. I, that I but see. there's really nothing better than walking through Penn Station with a shoe that just needs a good it's shine. Shining. I know. Get it shined up. Walk out in the so city. So you've done it. Oh, many a time, you can. I know, me? I get it, it's, and, and it's it's just. I, I thought you just it. meant at the top that you didn't want your shoes to be shiny because I no. can't get into that. No, I'm just. It, I, I don't. I, I don't, don't want shiny shoes. They like really, really kind of freak me out a little bit. Like get a little scruff. Like perfect teeth, gross. Yeah, a little rough. Oh. Don't. I don't like veneers. Like perfect teeth, gross. Perfectly shiny shoes, gross. Yeah. Little, you don't like the new shoe? Well, like I feel like it's like a haircut. Like five or six days after you get a haircut, your head feels fantastic. Right. Yeah. And then like 10, 12 days later, you're like, I need another haircut. But right. what, what do you want to look at somebody and the first time you see them be like, wow, shiny shoes. Right. Yeah. Like, but but then not you, what but, you want people saying about you. But then you've got the Shawshank Redemption line. It's like, how often do you look at a man's shoes? Right. Right. And well, you get like a, you get a good like I'm not saying I like a little weathering on certain shoes right but then on like a nice pair of black shoes that you wear with a suit you need a good shot. I'll tell you when I look at a guy's Do shoes. You? Yeah, when they pretend that they're big ballers. Oh uh, yeah. I've what, had, what's that mean? So like snakeskin boots? No, 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 not uh, necessarily. They're cheap shoes, mocking fancy shoes. No. So basically, so we we've dealt with some characters in the past that like come on, they, they they put on this game like they're like millionaires, right? And they've got all this money and that they can do these big jobs for you and they could do mm-hmm. this and they're they're selling a big game. Are we talking about Ben show- and Drew? No, but they're showing up with the cat. No, yes. because Ben and Drew, when you look down at their feet, they're wearing nice shoes. Yeah, for, that's it, true. It matches the outfit. When you see this, well, their pants like, aren't covered like, in the yeah, shoes. I'm a, sell, sure. I'm a self-made millionaire, and he's got like shoes with like you know shit stains on them. And right. like, you know you don't. Like that's the only time I really pay attention to shoes. Like like sneakers. They're really like when someone walks in. It's like hey, this guy's been an executive and he's done this, this, and this. I look down. He's got these pimping out these sneakers. I'm like yeah. that might be true. Yeah. You know. And then you look at the guy who's got like the dirty, shitty. Yeah. You know. Like, like for example, we joke about this all the time. Jack wears these. Lucky uh, Reeboks that he has, and they look like they're, they, hideous. they're horrendous. They're yeah, these white terrible. shoes, that, but they have crap all over them. But he doesn't pretend that he's running around like, oh yeah, I just bought a, I just right. bought a, a, a horse yesterday. Why? Because I could. You know, Ooh, we've got a lot. To talk Can about he fly with, horses, with that horse? By the way, yeah. Yeah. So many. Uh, but people are flying with ponies. Apparently, yeah, I yeah. saw that. That was yeah. effing amazing. But I will say, the one person whose shoes I always notice, whose shoes are always clean, Nosed. and he has the best fashion, and he always looks amazing, oh. and I've ripped him apart on this show, Finstock. 
Oh yeah, he does. He yeah, Vince Dog has a great shoe game, yeah. and yeah. so does Nost. Nost, Nost, Nost sneakers. I haven't, I haven't Nosted yeah. it. Yeah, I, I like either. Do you see what it, it wasn't that good though? I kind of like sl- slurred. Just trying to let it. Yeah. We shot this series of sketches that <laughs> never fun. aired for the Casual Mafia. That was a shoe shiner yelling at his son about buying sneakers. Like, how am I supposed to shine a sneaker? Right. You kids with your sneakers, and then another one was a topographer yelling at his son about using a GPS system. Oh. They never aired because they weren't funny, and it was very esoteric. And it was just like my own humor of like old timey. Jobs with new timey kids. Yeah, I think you know that there's I mean? a way to combine kind of like the, the what's going on in the world and, and making this. Like, so RB3 did it. I watched this. I watched this short film yesterday with Ken Knapsack. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it was like crap. I thought I watched all the things. Now, you, well, you have, <gasps> have lucky enough. We have one more show tomorrow. That you, can catch okay, okay. Up. you did watch. You watched a lot, I watched a ton. and you listened to a lot. Let's start with what you listened That's to. First. Hours of my life. I know. Let's start. Let's start. You with... should watch RB3 short though, because I yeah, want you, it. Well, tomorrow. I want to be in it, and I haven't even seen mm. it. I want to support mm. RB3. Well, yeah. there's two things that you well, you watched and you listened. You listened because Afterthoughts did a whole thing on you over the weekend. Yeah. And you listened. You listened again to the full two hours. I listened to the full two hours, and you started to become a fan finish. of the show. Uh, all right. Here's the thing. I am. I'm deaf. And... Joyless. There it is. I'm definitely a J fan. Okay. Ryan is, I'm having a hard time with because he has so many twat takes. Like, he just will say one thing. Can we not use that? That's hers. It's, you don't have to use it. Okay. That's hers. That's hers. And <laughs> the Afterthoughts boys actually think it's funnier when I use it and none of you do. Thank you very Great. much. Fantastic. My boys. Right. Awesome. Uh, so <laughs> your boys. Now go back they to sh- you, this week. Yeah, Your boys. Now go no, back no, to shitting Snelling, on one of them. Snelling hates well, me. Okay, so Apparently. here's the No, thing. he doesn't hate. They don't he, hate you. He always directly contradicts himself. So he spends so much time being like, people talking about our show over a Collider who have never even watched it. They're misrepresenting it. And then Snelling's like, and by the way, I hear that Rose is not doing the necessarily best job over on the UFC show, and I haven't watched it myself, but here's what's wrong That's with it. That's not what he said, though. That's not what he said. It, That's not what he said. You gotta, sa- it is, you gotta represent him right. He said. No, he, he said, said in he the said, comments, it says all the of this stuff. He said in the comments. But he's talking about something he hasn't watched. Yeah, but he's just So saying, if Makuga says in the comics people don't no, like Ryan no, but that's Jay, not what he said. No, is that that's, that's not fair. No, what he said oh. what, he, what he said was, I know, I don't watch the show as much. I'm not into MMA as much. And I looked at the comments, and I'm noticing this. And he posed it to Jay. That's he posed what it, I did but for po- their but show. He po- right, but he posed it to Jay, and he said to Jay, you're on the show. Do you have a take on it? Because I happen to look. Here's the thing. Because we both agreed, and we talked about it all. We we do agree <laughs> that they have a great chemistry, the two of them. They do. They because do. Because you said it's almost that you like to argue. You are, you yeah. like to disagree. I don't with them. want two people on the show that, that I agree, agree with. with. Right. Of course yeah, not. Yeah, that's the whole point of that's that's what a great dynamic. But does. Jay's just chill, and I feel like he gets it. And Ryan says these things, and I'm like, twat take, twat take. Yeah. All but, the but, time. But it's entertaining, and that's kind of the point. Wait, I took notes on it. I took oh, legitimate good. notes oh, you on guys, the show. You got yeah, stream of content. Apparently, a year ago, I pissed off Ryan well, Snelling, and he some, doesn't like something it. Something happened That's a year ago. Either. Something he said. Something happened a year ago, and now they don't talk about their relationships with people outside the show. And you, he doesn't want to praise you because he thinks it's trying too hard. Yeah, okay. So I really have no idea anyway, what that part the was The show, about. by the way, if you guys want to catch it, we talk, about, we talk about Afterthoughts. <laughs> um, and the show is on Fridays on the Movie Talk feed, doing very well these days. And the guys have a great chemistry. Uh, you can also hear Jay on MMA Takedown with Dennis and Roca. And yeah, so they have um, they have a lot of takes. Some good, some I have a lot of takes. Yeah, what do you got? Hey, one one thing to start, okay. and you don't have to have listened to the show because I'll explain okay. things that happened. And to their, they asked they asked for this because they yeah. said Ryan said yeah, I want asked, Roxy to listen. So that's part of my is, take they that are. they asked for this, yes, yes, and yes. so that they have to remember that they asked. They for did. This. The first thing that uh, Snelling was like, it, she seemed made it seem like we're so privileged to have her listen. Guess what? You are privileged to have me listen. Mm. You're privileged to have anybody listen. He to went your back show. on that. We're, he no, went back Jay on it later. Went back no, no, on it, Ryan and went like, back on it. Anybody is privileged. Any one of us who does a podcast, there's so many podcasts out there, right. and we're all privileged. The to have Snelling and Stryer feud You're begins. All pri- we're all privileged. Yeah. We're all yeah. privileged. You're going to talk about especially, this on the show, especially yeah. De Niro. He's privileged. Yeah. All right, all right. There's okay. one take. That's one take. You. He says if you if you get to know me that you can say anything like mm-hmm. you can get to say anything to them. But he he wishes that we all would just say anything and start to be more friendly. What I did was. I started saying things, and then they got mad at me because I didn't know them enough. So which is it? Well, the, which is it? Yeah, I see. You, I are, mean, you got a couple. You got a shot. couple. couple took a shot. I'm on their side on this one. How? how where? Because, what side is be, that? Because the thing is, Twat once you well, no, because once you listened, you understood the show. 
Can you understood them. I, I, all right. <laughs> Sometimes you <laughs> accidentally slip into Schwarzenegger like this much. Well, listen, Moxie, the problem <laughs> is this. I heard it on your... Um, on wait, wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Okay. Just wait. Uh, this is this is my biggest one. This okay. is my biggest one. Right. They're upset that people are misinterpreting their show okay. even after listening to it. Well, first of all, take <laughs> take some blame, take some fault, mm -hmm. because if people are not understanding what you're saying, maybe you're not explaining it well. Right. Maybe not. And then they they're upset with with just they not or being. Both of them, okay. I guess, but more, more Ryan. Even though I really like him, but he's annoying. He, they all, <laughs> they want to be accurately represented. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break down the fourth wall for a second here. If anybody understands this, they're like, we're, we're, we're the ones that are being misrepresented. We're not accurately being represented. Let's talk about an incident that happened on this show. Wait, what are we doing now? Which one? Which incident? We don't want to. Which incident? Well, uh, the one that you don't want me to talk about. Yeah, don't bring that up again. No, I that? have to, to make no, this but, point. Okay, the, the briefly. Point, the point is, there's an incident on this show mm -hmm. where I do, I do nothing but explain my thoughts. I do nothing but explain my side of it. And then I move forward. I keep my headphones on. Right. I keep going in right. the conversation, and I do what I what I'm doing. Okay. Somebody else does not do any of those things. Somebody who I really like. Oh, and... you're talking about? So, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. That's something else. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. So Brett, during the conversation, gets upset, pouts, takes his headphones off, throws them onto the table, sits there, says he has nothing to say, and now I know he's working, but he has not shown up to this job. He's on tomorrow. Right, but right. until now. Right. Brett gets no slack. And I get thousands of tweets about how unprofessional I am. How unprofessional you I am. You did leave and your keys on the desk earlier. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's awful. I yeah. kept my headphones on. Yeah. I kept my cool. I continued conversation. You know what's unprofessional? This part of it, me recounting it, like praising myself, that's not that professional. But up to this point, yeah. I'm pro I was the one who was professional. But I'm unprofessional. And they're like, we're the ones being misrepresented. Welcome to the fucking business, bro. We're all misrepresented. I mean, Someone like lit a fuse we in the rock We are all misrepresented. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I like. See, I want you to listen at least once a week because this gets you fired up, and it, I like it. It's only on once a week. It's on once a week. So you, what do you mean at least? Well, I want you to talk week. about it once a week. In, in, in yeah. all of in all this maelstrom, I'm still upset about what I did a year ago. I, I don't know. I couldn't tell Snelly. if it was yeah. you if or something. He wants to private message happened. me on Twitter, or Instagram, or something like that. It was Please a tell me. I would like. Yeah, I'm telling you. Because the thing is, too, what I what I really like about their show when they kind of go into a lot of this because like you said you told you said well, inaccurately you know but you said inaccurately that they always crush TV talk they don't crush it they have they have thoughts on it to some of which I agree with and some of which I don't agree with at all um, I think I, that you they said something like what's uh, going on in the back in the, with the production booth right? probably I don't know right? probably hearing, zooming like, on the face yeah, can, we, can we not can we not do the zoom in thing right now like, oh okay yeah. we'll have a serious oh sorry, I thought sorry, they sorry. actually were laughing at us what? It wasn't. No, they're they're not, probably zooming no, in. They, they do this thing with Riley's yeah. face. They keep, they no, it wasn't Riley. We'll stop having fun. Sorry. Right. It was me. Uh, what's that? Fuck. I think it was me. Um, no, no, no. You're good, Roxy. You're good. Oh All right. no. We're so, zooming up on the plant. So, stop it. <laughs> I'm joking. We're having could, fun back here. I can see you doing it. I think I think Obviously. I know what it might be. We're doing a show. On the old Schmoes No Live yeah. show. I did crush them one time. But I think that's what it was. It was a yeah. different iteration of the was show. That a year yeah. I haven't liked it. It might have been. Oh, I mean, the Schmoes No Live show hasn't been on their air for about a year. Yeah, right. It was a different. Well, no, I'm saying but what they did also when they did they did after Schmo and it just right. evolved because Fernandez would listen to them and say, right. like, look, I really like what these guys are doing and the way that they approach it and let's make it an official show. And that's what the point that they made that I agree with. Is the thing is, and that was they when are, it, was, it was him and Captain Numbnuts. It, well, stop. And and <laughs> and the thing was is that they they Take had <laughs> that show when it was on Schmoes was just approached by as fans, right? The thing is too when it is on this channel, they are an official Collider show. And they said that yeah, on their I mean. show. And I, I think there was a good point. I was I thought it was a really good point too. They're not just a fan podcast. No, they're, they are they're fans of the show. But yeah, uh, I I think that they do a really good job. I can't deny it. And. You know, they, they poked fun back at me this week, and I really liked that. Yeah. So that's right. what it's about. And you're giving like, it back. And it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a fun feud. And just to, again, to pull back the curtain for a second, like, some people can take it on air, some people can't, and, right. it, and it's all about learning who can and can't, right? right? I feel like every single person in this room currently can, and so we poke fun at that's each right. other, and they are proving that they can, so I'm going to poke fun. Sure. And sure. they'll do the same thing back, I'm sure, this Friday. Uh, and you can check it out on Movie Talk. Everybody's the misrepresented! <laughs> check it out. People used to poke on Facebook? Yeah, it happens I, Sometimes. I still, still get it sometimes. And now you can poke or wave. Oh. Yeah. I would prefer you to wave, by the way, in case yes. anybody's listening. Yeah. Poking is too. Don't weird. Poke me. Yeah. It's like 
It's like kind of a sexual it's thing. A, thing to is it, that I what think. it is? It's yes. Yeah, it's, it's like it's a sexual. sexual. It, you feel that way, right? Yeah. I never knew it. Every time I get it, I yeah. just kind of like. <laughs> Delete it. Especially I don't ever when it's somebody you haven't talked to in a while, yeah. or somebody and you're random, like, and I'm, like, I'm like, they po- you know, the creepy guy in, at Facebook was like, "Hey, so I got this poke function," right. and then he snuck it in there, yeah, and nobody you. knew about it. Yeah, hey, I want you to stay poke there. Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, um, I don't like it. It's like it's like Newman in Jurassic Park. Yeah. He sets up the like, ha ha ha, yeah. at your poke. Yeah. Uh 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 uh. You didn't say the magic word. That's right. Um, you know what, Roxy, Roxy watched something else. Last night. I yeah. watched it last night. I did a lot of heavy listening heavy, last heavy, night. Heavy watching. Heavy watching. She watched the Grasping at Trust. And I got a text from Ben Spoiled that they it. were. That oh. ben, yeah, ben, I didn't he know. Guessed, he didn't know. I didn't but know. Ben sent me a picture no Christian. from the bar. Oh. Uh, the, the bar scene. And yeah, I, I had like, Ben watch it with me. Ben he was said, loving it. Ben was watching it. So uh, We were sliding through the TV, you know, when you take hours, yeah, yeah, you try yeah. to figure out what, and I was like, oh. And you found it. Oh, my God. Yeah. One of the perks of having somebody who also is in this space, he's going to want to watch this. Yeah. It was freaking awesome. It's great. Like, yeah, so it was fun. Yeah. Oh. So I knew nothing going into it. Okay, I didn't, you didn't know what it was about I or anything. I had okay. no idea what it was about. I didn't know who was going to be in it. I didn't know that you wrote it. I okay. didn't know. I knew nothing going in. Ethan Irwin helped me write it too, by the way. Yeah. So the first thing that happens is you guys are it's you and Ellis explaining what it is. Oh, in the beginning, was what, that was that was when we put it on. We, it's on actually the Clatter Podcast channel, but we put it back in the day when it was Schmoes Plus. Schmoes Plus, right? We put it on there because um, we made the show like three or four years before I even put it on the Schmoes channel. Yeah. yeah, you know, by the end, anybody who hasn't watched it, can I give a little spoilers? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. By the end of it, Ben was like really upset. <laughs> He was very bummed out. That it was over? It's no, really no, well done. No, man. not that it was over. He felt like it, the message was that men suck. Oh, and in that he message? was really in upset about it. Okay. Yeah, he was like yeah. very, very distraught. He was like, What do you think about this? He had a lot of questions because. Maybe you should do an after Chris- show. You Christian's, can talk about it. Yeah. Christian's character has just walked in on his girlfriend cheating yeah. on him. And he's doing this stand up and he's got this best girlfriend who's. Awesome. Who I want you to play in the reboot. By she, the way. she, whoever that actor well, is. It's Eliza. It's Eliza Schlesinger. She's a bring. Bring Eliza. I don't know, her, but she's very talented. Yeah, she's she's a, never she's seen like Eliza pop, Schlesinger. Just put Eliza nope. Schlesinger on Netflix. She's, she's like so nine yeah, Netflix she's, specials. Yeah. She's so good. Yeah. Huge. It's, now. Yeah, there you go. She won oh, the first last comic standing. She's so yeah. talented. I was like, this girl is so good. So that's that's Eliza from. Yeah. Oh, I love her. Yeah, she's she's the co-lead and she's so good, but. She is amazing, yeah. and she's your best friend. And the whole time we're thinking, like, okay, she's gonna take him home, and they're gonna bang or whatever. Yeah. And you just want to go home with the random slut from the club, and then we—that was the end. And she, and she gives up her spot for you, and you go on stage, and Ben literally threw his hands up and was like, "Fucking men." And I was like, "Am I right? right. Am I right?" Like, well, I had Ken and I actually arced out the whole season. And it was a lot was supposed to happen. A lot was. Wait, supposed so to happen. was there gonna be season two, and you were gonna get with her? Remember, shop. It, originally it was a pilot. There was a 23, minute, 23 or 24 minute pilot that I split into eight episodes from the internet. Left, right is like a legit. Well, no, it, it was it was two. Left, right productions was one that we had come up with, and then there happened to be another left, right productions. <laughs> oh, afterwards. I was just yeah, saying, what? Yeah, whoopsie daisy. Oh, yes, but um, but yeah, listen, it, it was it, we that was supposed first, to be the first episode. But first, like your first impressions of. AK one young Christian Harlock, I two know. fat Ellis are the best. Oh yeah. Because I'm like, whoa! Wait. Double pop color, fat Mark Ellis yeah. is so, hysterical. So comments on both <laughs> of the, comments on both of those things. Yeah. Starting with the fat Ellis thing. Yeah. So that's real. Yeah, right? oh, yeah. that's I, not a fat suit. I was like, he's... Sean Maroney. We used to call him Sean Maroney <laughs> after that for a while because he's like, ladies and gentlemen, Sean Maroney, <laughs> and he like bombs on stage. It's it amazing. looked fake because the shape of his face was interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's when. Well, that's when he started losing weight, and if you see the first. That's like the first interaction of Schmoes ever on camera mm-hmm. together is but when he crossed. We didn't have a podcast yet. We didn't have anything. Oh, yet. Schmoes, that was Schmoes wasn't wow. even wasn't even a thing yet. We didn't even do any. We've never done a review together, and you see for one moment to where I'm at the bar and I tell off all his his friends and everything, and he walks by me, and we have this one stare off, and that's the first interaction with Schmoes that's ever. Funny. And then we cross paths. We yeah. never cross paths in it. But, wow. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I it, not that he was fat, fat, but he looked his face looked like a circle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm fat curious. Face, has the chat has, then, has anyone in the chat ever seen? They have, they have to watch it. Oh. Then uh, I loved that when you came on screen, Ben's the first thing Ben said was, "Wow, look at Christian in his 20s." And I turned to him and said, "How old do you think Christian is?" Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he was like, "What do you think? Like, 
because Christian looks the same to, to him. He was like, Christian looks the same to me. What do you think makes him look older now? And I was like, he really like. I know you, kids. You look. The, <laughs> <laughs> you, you do look kind of the because Ellis looks so different. Ken looks different. You Who kind of look the crappy more ex-girlfriend. The same. Is it April Macy? The no, Serena Vincent. Serena, Serena Vincent. Vincent from uh, Cabin hey, Fever. We got yeah. we got side titty. How did you guys get her to do that? I asked her. She said, she said, she said, she <laughs> said, you're cool. And you know who, you know who way. is the guy who's, who's Dang having the fan? Yeah, uh, Rick Ingram. Yeah. And Rick Ingram, oh, who classic. I still regret. I would have changed, because here's the reboot. I want to do a reboot. I want Cody to play the main character. <laughs> yes! Uh, I want, I want you to play Marley. Amazing. Um, and then, yeah, me and McCoo could play the bartender or, or Why something Why was McCoo's in it? I didn't know him yet. I didn't know him yet. I didn't mean I didn't mean McCoo to like two, three years later. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Riley, Riley and I weren't really, we were, oh, we're, yeah. we were buddies, but like it was, Mike, Mike Cornacci is in it. Yeah. He makes a, yeah, he yeah. Makes a cameo in it, but uh, yeah. No, I came in, we, we did a bunch of meetings where, if this was going to go, I yeah, was well, going to be one of the writers. Yes, we had we had we, we did had about we had so many episodes where it was going to go. That girl, the one that he winds up going, the ca- my character goes home with, was supposed to turn out to be a real lunatic, his neighbor, and starts like. Well, you stalking. could tell she was a lunatic. She was really she had crazy, eyes. but she was really, and that was the whole point. She was started a great actress, Jennifer Pia. It was started to, she was. We had this whole plan of what was going to happen, and the, the whole point with Marley and Matt was that they were going to have it was going to be like Ross and Rachel, and you were waiting. Were these all your buddies? I mean, people that I worked with and stand-up comics. So you just kind of were like, who, whoever's my talented friend. No, 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 no. I mean, I wrote parts for certain people. So I wrote the bartender for Tommy, who, who I thought crushed it. Um, he was awesome. He was, Tommy he was from the Tom, Tom Connolly. Oh, Tom Connolly. The Connelly. performances yeah. were badass. I was really pleasantly surprised yeah. with that. Well, because obviously, when you're watching something from 2007, right. like the production is not the same, but the yeah, performances. Yeah. Right, right. That's and that's what we we auditioned. We auditioned Eliza. There was like seven to ten That's the comedians. Girl that I, I yeah, found Marley. and I like. Yeah, it's Marley. Yeah. Yes. So you totally she, found her. She was the best one. I mean, she I came in. At, we. I, mean, I still have the tapes. And I look over. I'm like, yeah, she's she's Marley. Yeah. yeah. She was so good. Was I was blown away. I had so much of what I wanted to do with that character and everything too. It was it was it was during the pilot. It was during the, it was during the pi- uh, pilot strike. Or excuse me, the uh, TV writers. strike. Yeah, the writer strike. Yeah. And then, yeah, there he is. Look, look at that. Wow. Yeah, that was that, that was his just, lips can you just play his, can you just play the audio for that? Just the audio. Yeah, go go back to the to his joke. He's, he bombs on he bombs on stage. It's amazing. Sean Maroney. I feel like this should have more views, but we talk about that all the time. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, people are still they're still finding it. Yeah. Okay, I just want to hear just to hear his This is such yeah, this yeah. is Is always, this the set that he bombed? Yeah, this is the set that he bombs. Here we go. Schoolboard. I couldn't find a place to park. <laughs> Don't go up on that stage and start spewing out how much you hate That's LA. Tom Connelly, yeah. right? I love that. I mean, the only time you can park in this city is if you're driving one of those little scooter things. And if you're driving one of those, trust me, pal, you're not going on a date. <laughs> That's right. Last night at 2 a.m., Got myself Good a Ken. hot dog at Pink's, yeah. a cell phone from a homeless person, Ken was and a Texas Hold'em game yeah. with a bunch of prostitutes all on the Ken same block. Come on, hit <laughs> DJ with the hat. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Sean Maroney. Sean Maroney. <laughs> Sean Maroney, look at Ken. Look at Ken with Sean the elbow Maroney. patches. Give it up. Sean Maroney. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, anyway, so I'm glad you. I'm glad you liked it. A lot okay. of people watch it, dude. Really? A lot of people have seen it. Have yeah, seen it? Yeah, that's good. The chat started moving. Well, it's Good. eight parts, but they're four minutes each. So it's right, like, boom, 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 boom. right. And like I said, it was split up into uh, in, a pilot. So was YouTube up. back in the day? Was it you couldn't upload a video that long, or you? Yeah, wanted yeah, that, to put... that was it. And I, I I'll probably I want to go back and get a, a, a better copy of it. Probably just put the whole thing up. At, we were all is. putting up like similar stuff at the time too, because mm-hmm. me and Paul did this show called Dear Diary. Which is me is just like this lunatic dude that yeah. wrote like his is thoughts it and it, yeah it's up it's on the Casual Mafia channel yeah, yeah. I would uh, love to I mean I, I'm telling you I think we could do something diary. if we did we could do yeah. you I think we could do a pilot whether it's this or another one that you were thinking of too I right. think we could do something fun with the crew here and right I mean it's just a matter of, it's just a matter of time time These fucking guys are so busy all the time yeah. so it's hard to get them you know, I mean they're slammed. Yeah. Um, but anyway, was Cody willing and able? I talked to Cody about it the other day. I said, Cody, you know, if I did a reboot of Grassman Straws, I'd want you to play Matt, and he was down. Um, and I, I <laughs> think you'd be, I think you'd be, because Cody's Marley, because Marley's supposed to be a bad, like a bad comedian who's learning, and eventually yeah. she was. 
the funny thing is, ironically, she was – the progression of – I had like seven seasons in my head. Right. By the time the last season, she would eventually turns into what Eliza is now. Right. Um, and that's – that's So Christian of, found her, just so you know. She, well, I, I well, Eliza I met – I started her whole career. Uh, I met Eliza at the improv. She was like 21. I met her at the improv and on Melrose. She was just trying to get out into town, trying to get up on stage, 21, 22, whatever it was. And um, – our friend Martini, who helped us start Schmoes, obviously right. too. I was working with her, and she and uh, Eliza and Martini were friends. And then Eliza just got involved in the circle. You know, yeah. she was is she, Martini, a real name. Mar- Martinique <clears throat> is her yeah. name, but uh, but Eliza. I was talking with my, with my wife the other night. We were talking about Eliza, and she is the one of the hardest working people because I was watching because I watched uh, it all about Nina, right? And we started talking about certain. What's comedians. all about Nina? Uh, sorry. So this movie I watched over the last couple of days, Mary Elizabeth Winstead is in uh, this movie about a comedian uh, cool. called but All About Nina. Was there, by the way, a play on that with All About Eve? Was that why? Was it about? I don't like, know. I don't think uh, so. But but anyway, uh, we started talking about Eliza. She was, she is one of the hardest working people I have ever met in the stand-up comedy world. Did she, she was, suck at first? No, uh-huh. not, not, not just that. Just tours and tours Just, and tours and goes up and goes up. But even before she was touring, though, yeah. she was a student of the game. And what she would do is she would watch Comedians that she thought were really good, comedians that she thought were bad, learned from the comedians that were bad, and didn't make to do certain things. She was always going up, always trying to find spots. Yeah. She, she was good she, now. She's really she's good. She's one of the best yeah. comedians. I mean, as far as like she, most successful comedians, she sells out theaters. Today. Yeah. yeah, and really, she, she, yeah, she's she's and awesome. I found her. She's wow. huge. Hey, <laughs> you found her. Um, <laughs> but she is she is everywhere, and she was just one of those people. Like, yeah, you'd see her at the comedy store, and if I, I was going up like two three times a, a night, right. And every place Two, I went, three times a night. Yeah. So if I would, I would start at room five, then I'd go over see if there was a spot in the improv, and I'd go over to the comedy store, and and wow. and so wherever I went, Eliza would be there. She was like not, you know, to where she was. You always saw her working, trying to get up, and then eventually she just started going up. She was getting up. She became a, a, a oh, there we go. Uh oh, comedy store regular. She was uh, becoming nothing spilled. No, it's got it quick enough. It's like. Those Matrix. cockroaches keep it in there like Jello. Neo, Neo style. Yeah, yeah, it does. It, that's oh, what I'm saying. How did that happen? Because it's I become a, it's a good the next Marvel movie. I would be Cockroach Man. Yeah, and Cockroach would, Man. Yeah, that's it. Um, but that's it. So uh, she is. If you don't know Eliza, you should definitely check her out. I want to try and get her on the on the show. We should have her because she's her been on a couple of times because yeah. they they SNL basically stole one of her bits. I remember. Yeah, and we, talk, and we, we talked about we her. On. Yeah, yeah, really? yeah, yeah. She yeah was, she's got this really funny bit about airplanes and uh, you know like when they are like Diamond Club, Fur Club, and she she rattles through it very quick. And then they did that on SNL. Like, and she'd been touring on it, and actually maybe even had a special with it on it. Right. And there was like footage of her saying that, and then SNL did that exact, like exactly, almost word for right, word at right. points. Yeah, I remember wow. it was a big thing. Yeah. We talked about it on Schmoes. It was like three, four years ago. Yeah. But, uh, she was she upset? Yeah. yeah, yeah. She talked about it on the show for a yeah. while. Um, oh, she talked about it with you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. back in like what it was like 2012, 2013, people were there. It was like rampant criminality at the comedy store, Laugh Factory, a lot of different clubs of people. Like people were going up and then famous comics were just ripping or seeing it on TV and shit. Yeah. So yeah, it was happening for a yeah. bit. You know, it's funny because you look at what the the internet has kind of put a bit of a stop to that. Yeah. Um at least I mean not a not a cold stop. It's always gonna happen in the sure. shitty business that that hap- you know that happens unfortunately in stand up comedy all the time. Mm-hmm. I remember one time I was at the I was at the improv and I had been doing this joke kind of for a while. And I saw this guy, word for word. It wasn't like, oh, that premise is, is similar. Anybody right. could do it. It was it was the same joke. Right. And I remember, there's the first time it really ever happened to me, and it happened to me many times afterwards, but it was the first time. Packed house. I went, fuck this. And I went right in the middle of the, the room it, after. It was the same that you had done. It was, a, was, it was a joke it was that I had done. Yeah, it was, and, I, and I stopped in the middle of the crowd, waited for him to finish. He stops, and I go, come here. I go, don't do that again. Yeah. And he's like, what? I go, we know that you've seen me do that joke many times. Yeah. Don't do it again. Yeah. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. This is the same. I go, it's the same fucking joke. Don't do it again. Yeah. And he never did it again. Yeah. But like, you know, you try to play it off. Like, you know, but I was like, and I didn't, I could have like kind of went to in my inner circle and be like, that guy, watch out for that guy because he steals jokes. He didn't, to, to his credit, I didn't see him do it to, well, me or anyone else again, but there's other people that are notorious for it. 
I was I did at, it all the time. Do you remember? It's now like State Social House. It's on Sunset. It used to be Red Rock. Yeah. yeah, yeah do you know yeah. Red Rock? Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know State Red, Social House. State Social House. Yeah. So upstairs, upstairs now is like really nice. But back in the day, there was this dive bar upstairs, and they would do comedy shows right. up there. Sometimes like two, three times a week. And so one night, we promoted it, and it was right, right at the launch of Casual Mafia that a bunch of us were going to be up there, and we that place was packed out. Like, it was awesome. And so this comic goes up there, and he starts bombing. Right. And and it's like it's really bad. And this room was so warm. And then all of a sudden he he rips off an Anthony Jeselnik joke oh. that destroys. And oh, you no. could see like the crush in his eyes, knowing that none of his stuff was as good as something he ripped off. Right. And he, he was supposed to have seven minutes and walked out after like three and a half. And he was whatever. And I went out. and I was like, I was like that doing that Jeselnik joke was really tough. He was like, yeah, man, just like this is freaking brutal. And he just <laughs> he just went home. He it's just tough. went I'm home. I'm telling you, man, yeah. I, I only did that one time when I first first starting out in L.A. Yeah, where I was just having such a bad set that I left. Yeah, and I realized that was, I got lectured for, for who was it? No, it was another night with Doug Stanhope because actually Doug Stanhope, like for some reason I had had a I had some I had a set, and I crushed, and f- the crowd loved me. Yeah. And Stanhope just tore into me for no reason. And he's like, that fucking guy's an idiot, huh? Yeah. And they're like, what are you talking about? We love that guy, right? Yeah. And he's just like, nah, fuck him. I didn't like his face, whatever it was. I can't remember whatever, whatever it was. But no, there was an, it was the same club, though. And, yeah. I was, and, it was, and I was bombing. It was about three minutes, and I was supposed to do eight minutes. And I remember, and I didn't know, I didn't know the rules well enough. I was, I was still learning them. Yeah. And I remember, and I literally said this on stage. I'm in the middle, I go, fuck this, and I leave. <laughs> and the host is like, the host is at, at the bar. He's like, what? And it's, just, and it's a, it is a no no. It is a no no. The rules are you don't leave. No, early. you finish. You fin- I mean, and Maisel, I think it, it was they, yeah. they do it. Maisel, yeah. you, you stay. You have you have eight minutes. You do eight minutes. If you're dying for eight minutes, you die for eight minutes, and then you leave. Um, I did not do that. Did you see Maisel? Did you watch Maisel? I watched Maisel? It. Yeah. yeah. When she because the husband that's the plot of the uh, the yeah. pilot yeah. that the husband is ripping off Bob Newhart. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, and then well and then they tell her they go you have those minutes you stay with those minutes because right. the host when I did it. Is at the bar and is expecting, and you know, and that's the host likes to take that time to have a drink, talk yeah. to people, knows how much time he has before the next comic comes. You go out. full Sean Maroney if you're going to do it. You, you go was, full, you full Sean Maroney. You just bomb. Yeah. You bomb. And yeah. then, but uh, but yeah. So it was that. That was I, I remember that. That was like in like 2000, and I was up. There's a Martini <laughs> Lounge was the name of the place, and right near Paramount. And I was just like, I remember going, just hearing. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. And I'm like, fuck this. I believe. <laughs> I forgot. I haven't told that story. Yeah. Classic. Yeah, anyway, Classic. I told you a story. I got kicked out of the club. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got kicked yeah. out of a club in Minnesota. That you were performing at? Yeah, we're doing this. It was me, this guy Tommy Savitt, and uh, Danny Hasami was the guy's that name. That sounds like a good old crew. And we were, we, were, we were just driving around the country. Yeah. And we were in Minnesota. And we were in Colorado. We were, and it was the Acme Comedy Club. In in uh, in Minnesota, there's one in every town. There it was, and I was there, and it was packed, and I was. This is a bit of an ego thing. Sure. So I see all these names coming. I I've been a regular at the comedy store for like four or five months, yeah. and I'm like, okay, good. That brings some weight to it, right? So Danny Hasami, who was a guy who was just doing comedy here and there, he wasn't a regular anywhere, and, right. and Tommy Savage was a, and still is a seasoned just vet. Sure. Tommy Savage gets like ten minutes on this lineup. There, are all these people go. Danny Hasami gets like seven, and I got three. Yeah, I'm like, what? I'm like, what am I three? You for? wanted more. I wanted like seven to ten. I was yeah. doing at the time. I was doing fifteen of the comedy. You travel all the way to Minnesota for three minutes, and that's what I'm saying. So, and but again, rule is you get you take what the club gives you. Sure. Unless it and and it was like a whole big thing. So it's this is stuff learning through it. So I get up. It is jammed, and I'm one of the last ones. I get three minutes, and I'm crushing. Yeah. From start to finish, crushing, and I'm like in my head, I'm like. Okay. I'm going. Yeah. Then I get to five. Then the light starts flashing. Blinking. I get to seven. Yeah. Flashing. My mic cuts off. I keep going. <laughs> I'm screaming at this point. Yelling. I'm doing and I was like, and my last thing was a samurai joke that I did, a samurai bit. And I do it. And I do the samurai thing. It crushes the owner. Grabs me by the shoulder when I go off. He goes, "You're never coming to this club again." Yeah, and I go, "Fuck it, fuck it." The crowd's screaming and yelling. I'm out. The next thing you know, even they're screaming and yelling. I'm out in the cold by myself. And the guy Tommy Savage is like, "You just had to tell you, you, you had to tell you sword bit, huh? You just had to do the samurai. You had to do it." He's like, "Now you can't come into this club. I was banned for that club for three years. I couldn't wow. get into that club." Um, he said, "That was it. Yeah, I, I had to. I, you know, you got to learn. You got to yeah. learn." And so that yeah. was it. 
But I, I don't know. I think I told that story. Anyway, let's, I hadn't heard it. Well, let's move on. Thank you for watching the show. Uh, I appreciate it. You're welcome. And Speaking I, of stand up, though, yes. Mark Ellis, Los Globos Theater, Friday, October 26th, hosted. <laughs> <laughs> Put the music on. Let him, let him play. Yeah. Go ahead. Go. Boom. Uh, Friday, October 26th, Los Globos Theater in Silver Lake, California. It's near Los Angeles for those people that don't know. Uh, I, myself, Ken Knapsack, will be hosting Mark Ellis's theater <laughs> extravaganza. There will be fireworks, a live pony as a support animal, all of it together. Los Globos Theater, October 26th. Get your tickets, MarkEllisLive.com. And either Brett or Roca. Yeah, are we doing oh, that tomorrow? Right. Is that tomorrow? From what, we, from what we're trying to do, Ellis really wants to get it done tomorrow. Yes! Beardo. Is RB3 confirmed for tomorrow, boys? I know. I no one. No, I don't. Maybe we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the yeah. first time I'm hearing about. It. I'll text him oh, right Good now. old Ellis. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't. Yeah. yeah. And I don't even think Ellis can be on the show. So uh, I, I. No, he doesn't. He just wants to make sure it's done tomorrow just done. because he Got wants it. to have it. He did locked. say he was going to be here tomorrow. I think. Did he? But it could be the surprise for Ellis. Johnny like Lacoste is coming here. on tomorrow. No. Oh, okay. Lacoste is coming. Nice. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Johnny Lacoste. Is he promoting? He's shooting a special. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about also too. So um. I didn't know how much money it costs to do a show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not cheap. Lots nope. of money. Wow. Lots of money. Yeah. So and you can say it's for a charity, but then when you bring in cameras, it's not. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and that's that's wrong right. and rude. It's the truth. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to, yeah, you guys, I wanted to let everyone know that today, obviously, if you saw the the headline, we're gonna be we all a lot of us saw Halloween. We're not gonna spoil it, um, but we are going to talk about it for sure. We're gonna review it uh, at the eleven o'clock oh, hour here. Joy. So yeah, and I really wanted you to be there. Uh, I really, I was so upset and mad at myself. The second we walked in, Christian said, "Why didn't we take Makuga? Why didn't we take Makuga? Yes. We had an extra ticket too." So wait, yeah. Makuga, you did something weird. Like I no, thought, just the music. I th- like remember we were hanging out a little bit, and you were in a quiet place, and that wasn't that yeah. scary for you, right? No, no, no. But do Halloween movies like or slasher movies scare you? Like, I don't know. I've never seen one. Yeah, I'm Seriously? gonna go You've with never the, seen yes. the original Halloween. No, you that this wow. movie would scare him. <laughs> This movie would scare the, the shit out of me. Yeah. You think so? Have you ever which, seen it? Yes. Which one's Friday yes, yes, yes. the 13th? I was scared. Of it. That, that's no, Jason. You'd, you'd be Jason. fine. You'd be fine, Josh. Uh, I, I don't I think, think so. I, you'd be totally fine. I agree. I agree with cops during this I one. Don't, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so either. I was f- flipping balls. Okay. Well, then if you're scared, then I'll definitely be scared. Yeah. Maybe. I saw one Jason movie. I think it was like Jason 2 <laughs> at a sleepover in the fourth grade at Justin Houth's house. Oh, how's he doing? Uh, he's good. He's a painter in Pittsburgh. Good dude. I uh, got a couple kids, and I for for I'm I'm gonna guess somewhere around three to four months. I remember this is in October. Uh, up until about Christmas, I wouldn't go upstairs without all the lights on in the house. Oh, oh. and then my brother would follow me and turn off the lights. So I that felt I was that okay. way yesterday. Last night? Okay. Oh, uh, I I checked the bed, the closet. Stop that! <laughs> is that hereditary? Yes, I think. I, I think that was that poltergeist. One. What was that, guys? No, it's just a ghost sound. It's just a yeah. ghost sound. All right, well, close. Sounds like Riley was closer than we were. Um, we'll talk about that at 11 o'clock because we're going to review yeah. it. There will be no spoilers. So if you obviously, if you haven't seen it, we're not going to ruin anything. Real for quick, it. though. did if you, We talked on the show about this McKamey, uh, the McKamey experience. That no, guy would like... It, oh, no. No, we didn't bring that up. Okay. I, I, was like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Go ahead. So, so last week... Uh, I think you said to Perry. Snyder was looking at it. Snyder was looking at it. That's who it was. Uh, The McCamey Manor, I think is what it's called. It's outside San Diego. Have you heard of this before? When Riley emailed me something about it. Okay. So basically, (laughs) if you survive eight hours, you get 20 grand. 20 grand. 20 grand. No one's ever done it. And nobody's ever done it. And it's like full contact. You're covered in blood. You get waterboarded. It's scary as all hell. They make you sign a 15-page waiver. Yeah. It's a 15-page waiver. 15-page waiver. (laughs) Uh, The guy from Dark Tourist on Netflix did it. He said he lasted like 20 minutes. Right. Um uh, that, that doesn't interest me I, at what's all. What's the longest somebody's lasted? I was gonna off- six hours. Yeah. Some woman yeah. did. I was gonna offer Makuga a thousand dollars to do it for an hour, and he said no way. Yeah, no, no. I, I listen. What? I'm not rich, but I don't need my life ruined for months at a time. And you would be, you'd be disturbed Correct. thoroughly. Yeah, for and a thousand. Co- cops and Cody. Cops and Cody are like. Can take this type of shit, and they were like, "No, they wouldn't do it for for, for an hour." Because cops, yeah. cops, are you wouldn't you wouldn't attempt to do this, right? No, these things are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they are. No, no, no. This one's like the more extreme one, yeah. but there's like other places where you don't win money, yeah. where people just go for fun. You, you sign a, wa- a waiver to get dick slapped in your face, people, right. and it's just stupid. How mad are you <laughs> if you make it six hours? Yeah, and, no. and you don't. And you don't get anything. Nothing. You get nothing except agita. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, That's I would imagine severe PTSD, Yiddish. right? What? Yes. Yiddish. Yeah. Agita. Yeah. I did that. I watched mm. The Sopranos. I used it a lot in Sopranos. Eh. 
Yeah. That, that, the uh, Jewish oh. season when they take over the motel. Yeah. That's a good yeah. one. Um, oh, okay, well, let's do some news. Let's do some movie news, and then we'll move on to Halloween once we get back from the break. And then we have a very special guest coming in here at um, 1130. David Desmashian from Ant-Man and the Wasp is coming in. And the first Ant-Man. Yeah, and I see him in uh, at every Marvel premiere that we ever go to. He's always there. Yeah. Um, he's a big fan. I think, believe he's a, just a fan in general. So I want to have comic books because he's, oh, he's, yeah. DC was in The Dark Knight. Uh, he's, awesome. in, he's in a ton of, yeah, he's in a ton, tons of stuff. So, he was on an episode of The Flash. Including a movie with Rocky. <laughs> what, he was in a movie with you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You told me that yesterday, yesterday. with, with uh, Jason Mewes, right. Yeah. You tell me that. Um, so let's get into some movie news. Riley, what the hell's going on? Uh, have you heard of The Flash movie? Oh, yeah, I've heard of it. <laughs> I... Fucking well, called this. They are. Uh, they're, they're, they're not going to do it for a while. Yeah, it's getting <laughs> pushed back. They're, they're yeah. not going to pushed back to. Yeah. So Ezra Miller's going to film the third Fantastic Beast because allegedly there's five. So he's going to film that, which is going to push. I know, fine? right? I, which is going to push I, the I Flash. Like that. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm. A, I'm okay. Let's see. Go the something next else. One. Yeah. They're pushing. So they're going to push it. They're going to. They're still. They said they're not comfortable with the script, so they're going to keep working on it. Right. They're going to, I know. Shock. So Shock. late 2019, maybe it's going to start. And then for a 2021, they're looking at. And then buried at the end of the article, a lot of people were picking up on Batman this. Is stuff. that, yeah, that they're like, but a lot of people are saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, that like, until we hear it from the actors. They're just saying it's reported that Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck's Superman, Batman movies, respectively, are not moving forward yet. And then they specifically whatever. said that it sounded like a new actor would be playing yes. Batman. Yes, and then a new actor will be playing Batman. So we so don't like, know Why yet. did they add that at the end of this weird flash? Of so right? let's just pile this on. Let's right, just put it on top. Right, let's start with this. Let's just start. All the... I loved JT's tweet yesterday, too. JT said at this point, uh, Ezra Miller could play the Flash's dad in the, in the yeah. movie. <laughs> it's um, true. But this, this movie keeps getting pushed back. I... It, it, there's, I'm, I'm two sides, two sides. The, the, if this is not the plan they want to do anymore, and they're going away from this connected universe that they set sure up originally, it it's what it looks like. So concentrate on what you have now. See how this uh, Joaquin Phoenix movie does. Let's I think they're all eyes are on Aquaman. To be honest, that's true. And I think they're, they're looking at that. that. If it's going to come out, yeah. be huge, critically acclaimed, but please the fans. You're pronouncing it, it wrong. It's Aquaman. Yeah. I don't know, Aqu man. Aquaman? Aquaman. It's, he's a Jewish fellow. Yeah. Jason oh. Aquaman. Do you, should I, Roxy, do you think that they're working on other stuff? And yeah, that's what, so yeah, I, I actually think this is one of the best pieces of news that we could hear, even though it's frustrating yeah. if you're a massive uh, Barry Allen fan. Don't rush it, right? A, don't rush it, but... What are you B kicking? Somebody's I'm, kicking something. I think it was the uh, table leg under oh, okay. there. Okay. Sorry, right. go ahead. I'm not, for, I'm not sorry trying for yelling to kick at something. You. Right. Um, you, you know when you, <laughs> you know when you actually did something and you didn't want to take ownership. Yeah. So what I was doing was I was hitting my phone against the table. Uh, wow. oh. there you, see, yeah. there you yeah. go. Yeah. Come on, stop it. Take, She's you been, took yeah. your keys off. And the by table. the way, I gotta call hey, you out. Snelling, on Snelling yeah. and Jay. And now I'm gonna call you out. I was going too. like this. I was like flipping it. But this is my favorite thing that Roxy's doing. I haven't called her out yet. I might as well do it on the air. Do it. Yes. So this is what she's been doing the last. She didn't do it today yet, but she's been doing this thing too. She's she's like a kid at school. She like because we know that the rule is not to text or, or send yeah. tweets. So she does the sign underneath the table. We know what you're texting. I, I'm in the not tweeting. texting. And We've tweeting. all watched you. <laughs> You've done it. Seen You've done it. You've done it like five times. Honestly, I don't text and tweet. I, I What do you do? What do you I do? I do have like she that anything. I I go like this. Leave it alone. I check. I push the buttons. I check. Yeah, I go like to. this. Like Just I'm not put actually. It away. Do, put it away. I, you could check my phone after everything and check my outbox and my messages. You'll see nothing's been sent. I've done nothing. When, I just can't help but like. Yeah, but let's try. So stop it. <laughs> okay. Good All point. Right. All right. What's what's <laughs> is it on? Is it on? Uh, do not disturb. So it doesn't buzz no. over there. It uh, it doesn't buzz. Right, finish your point. Finish your point, please. Oh, <laughs> it's a six. Flash. Um. So. Good thing. The, I I. Everybody thinks that I hate Henry Cavill. I don't hate Henry Cavill. I don't love his Superman, but I think it's fine. So I him. actively dislike Ezra Miller's Flash. Mm. I think he is not a good Flash. Mm. I think that uh, Grant Gustin is a much better Barry Representation Allen. Representation of Barry Allen. And, and just talking about Barry Allen, I actually, yeah. So I, I don't like what we've seen of Ezra Miller's performance. So for me, as a side note, I'm excited. Too goofy? Way too goofy. Okay. And it's hard to tell whether it's the writing or him. Or the direction or him because that might be he might be giving them exactly what they want. I think that that's probably the case. But it just is because yeah. I love him and everything else he's ever done. I think Ezra Miller is very yeah. talented. But I saw that and was just like, 
Ugh. Yeah. What's happening there? So I'm happy about that. Number two, I think that they're trying to decide legitimately, and this is not insider knowledge. I think they're trying to decide whether or not to reboot this universe. And if they get people on board, like Riley just said, with Aquaman, now we have you Aquaman. on board with Aquaman. Now we have you on board with Gal. Now we have you on board with Jason. Yeah. Now we'll get you on board with Ezra and we'll figure out the rest. But we can't have you only on board with Gal. Henry maybe not be there. Ben right. probably not so you still be there. Think, so you're, this is just the figuring out phase. Pushing still. it yeah. back. I and agree. they already went from, they were doing a flashpoint. They decided yeah. that was a badass idea. Badass as, as in bad ass idea, not badass together. Right. Not a good thing. Yeah. Dad, shitty, a shitty ass idea. Ass a idea. A shitty idea. Shitty. It was right. a shitty idea. It was okay. a, the T idea. Right. Yeah. Well, they, anyway, the movie comes out. Uh, if, whether it ever comes out in general, we're gonna we will find out. But I'm gonna jump back to the Fantastic Beast thing too, right? So I am. I think one one of the I think rare. What you mean is the DJ uh, tour called Fantastic Beats and where to Fantastic find them. Beats. All right, I'll be outside. See you later, buddy. Uh, <laughs> No, that was good. Sean Maroney! Hey! <laughs> that that's, a, that's what we should do now. Every time someone tells a bad joke, Sean Maroney! Sean Maroney, everybody! Um, thank you. Well, that's fantastic. How did you pick that name, by the way? Uh, I don't remember. We had huh. some good... That one and uh, the other one was Lou, whatever Lou's name was. But that's a great haircut that Ezra Miller's got going on there. Uh, yeah. um, but this movie, Fantastic Beasts, I think I'm one of the few people that really enjoyed it. You I really liked I it? I really enjoyed the first one. I, I, I remember watching the first one really? in the theater. I went to the screening and... And I so mediocre. I really liked just it a, a lot. Movie. And mm-hmm. I just started, so my, my daughter, my oldest daughter, loves the Harry Potter movie. She's seen four of them, right? And we went and we started watching Fantastic Beasts because like, you don't really need to see the whole series yet to, to understand Fantastic Beasts because I want to take her to the new one when it comes out. <laughs> um, and you know she was she was getting into it for sure. It had to stop it because the baby woke up. Sure. but whatever. Um, when the baby wakes up, you have to stop what your seven year old is doing at this point. Yeah, because the, because the problem is that she's one and she wants to be with the seven year old. So. She crawls out, and she—I don't want her looking at some of that stuff yet. You know, she can't not, see it. Not yet. They don't know what they're seeing. It's not. It's. We, we talked about this last week. It's bad. Yeah, yeah it's kids. bad for. It's bad for kids at one year to be watching any type of television. Although I let I her watch Elmo. I let her watch a little bit of Elmo. Um, I'm going to design my kid's crib after Nakatomi Plaza. All right. So that it knows that is, right away. That is awesome. That's <laughs> to do that to Josh have, and, and see. Yeah. I will help you. Yeah, okay. man, that's yeah. a good idea. And yeah. you just coming and you pretend. I'm gonna have him dress. I'm gonna dress the baby because it'll be bald. I'm gonna dress yeah. the baby like Bruce Willis. I'm gonna dress him like John McClane the first time. Boy or girl, doesn't matter. What's that it. movie Diaper where they dress now. up the yeah. toddlers in famous <laughs> movie scenes? Neighbors. Uh, neighbors. Thank you. Neighbors. Thank I think you. it's neighbors. Yeah. What the fuck do I do with my hands? Stop stuff. <laughs> yeah. Either put them under the table. We're sleeping I, the hallway. They were under the table, but th- now so, there's nothing to do. It's a real problem, huh? <laughs> Just I'm like out, cry, right? trying to recrack my pen. already cracked knuckles. Give a pen. Yeah, Jesus. flick a pen around or. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know, but I was sticky. Is that just yeah. a texting sound? All night sound? last night because what? you. What I do? Whoa! You oh. took the tape off the chairs next to you at the screening, oh, yeah. and it got stuck wrapped around my leg because you didn't move it around. No, you grabbed it off and the back of my head. Oh, that was my head. No, that was your. That was a string. <laughs> that was a different thing. Yeah, then I had tape all over me. Right. All right. I was picking stick off me. Well, this is not my problem. You're a grown woman. This is not so um, true. Um, but yeah, I, I I like the idea that we're doing five of these movies. The only thing that concerns me is when I think of the Hobbit. And I think that it was pushed, and they stretched those movies into three movies. However, the author was not available to help with The <laughs> Hobbit, as where the J.K. Rowling Did is. Did they reach out to, to him, though? Or not? Yeah, well, they, got, they had a seance. Um, Newt Scamander was a clue on Jeopardy last night. Was hey! Yeah. 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 I, and I think that. that's the biggest thing. I think that Eddie Redmayne is the reason why you either like the movie or because I know a lot of people who are annoyed by him and is he's he's, he's no the, I like him you like he, he, I, I like him. Like an animal has his part of it. You didn't like you didn't I like the movie. Huh? The Could I put the animal back in they should have kept hole. Colin Farrell over hole. Yes. Johnny Depp. I am gonna agree with you on that, yes. sir. I'm gonna agree with you. I on like that. Colin Farrell. He was great. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Uh, Colin agree. Farrell to me like the problem now with that with this are, are we done with him? Is he where is yes. he because no we don't necessarily know that because think of Mad Eye Moody. Think of Mad Eye Moody from well, the regular series, like because he maybe he was just posing as as Colin Farrell. But that was Polyjuice. Do you think that Colin Farrell on a totally <laughs> meta thing? Do you think that Colin Farrell might be like one of the most underrated actors? One hundred percent, absolutely. He's in my just top because five right every now. time he appears in public, he's got like a beanie and Colin nine thousand bracelets. He's kind of a doucher. No, he's not a doucher. I've actually, I know. Yeah. I think he's great. Colin Farrell, I, I, Jeremy Renner. 
Uh, I'd take Colin Farrell Colin all Farrell day. all day long. Yeah. Jer- Colin Farrell has much more range. Colin Farrell and Mr. Banks yes, is that, that whole movie. I was going to say. It's that whole movie. I he told him. That Colin was the Farrell first thing. That was the first thing I yeah, said to him. Your heart out. I interviewed him for Fantasy Beast okay. at, at Comic-Con about two years ago. He walks in. I said, before we started, I, before we started, I just got to let you know, I think it is a crime that you were not nominated for, for Mr. Film. Banks. Yeah. Yeah. And he was very appreciative of it. Obviously, yeah. we talked for a little bit, but it was like. He was the only reason to keep watching True Detective season two. I swear. I'll stand he was great. by that. I yeah. didn't watch it. He is a. Uh. He is, and that, you talk about a story about a guy who started off. Steven Spielberg, Minority Bullseye. Report. Well, yeah, but everyone was just like, that's your next movie star. And yeah. he had the talent, but that's your next movie star. And he had some hard times. In his career, it was basically right us. after In Bruges. Oh, which oh, is yeah, the no, in Bruges, I thought movie. was the co- was the comeback. It was comeback, yeah. okay, okay, because okay. he because he he had you know it's it's documented. He had I think he had uh, um, drinking problems yeah, and things yeah, of that yeah. nature. But he he turned himself is he around. Sober now? I believe so. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to. I, I. He's definitely turned himself around from yes. where he was yeah. when he first started out and had this kind of meteoric rise, and and then he had some rough spots and he got himself. I mean, he is a very, very underrated actor. The like, lobster yeah. killing of a sacred deer. Yeah, man. The lobster oh. is one of the is, best. I, you know SWAT. Fucking SWAT. Lobster. SWAT. He's so badass in SWAT. He, he's good in everything. That's yeah. the point. Even yeah. the shitty movies like SWAT. Yeah, even, even Daredevil. He's great. Even in yeah. Miami Vice, which was yes. terrible. Yes. He is good in Miami he, Vice. He's, he's never. You never watch the the movie. He, Every time you watch a Colin Farrell movie, even though it's bad, he's been in some really shitty movies. Yeah. What's the movie? Look up the movie with him and Russell Crowe. SWAT take. Not SWAT take. It was, <laughs> but it was, SWAT take. No, but but look at uh, it was just uh, Russell Crowe, Colin Farrell, and Will Smith. Right, and it was this fantasy movie. The movie is terrible. But every time you see it, this is what you say: "A Colin Farrell movie is bad." Winter's Tale. Yep. Yeah. Winter's oh, Tale. Yeah, yeah. And you Cody, say, Cody's got that's credit Winter's to Cody. Tale nice, Cody. is terrible. Colin Farrell is really good. That's yeah. how I feel about Jake this, Gyllenhaal. Yeah. I think he's good in every single thing he does. Bubble yeah, but Boy. He, he's not in a ton of bad movies, whereas Colin Farrell was in a couple bad ones. Colin Farrell's been in some bad ones. Well, Jake Gyllenhaal's yeah, been in a fair right. share. Yeah, he's been okay. in a fair share. Right. I, I always think that he's the best part of anything he's in, and the fact that he was not nominated for Nightcrawler is like one of the grossest. I think, I, I think that Riz Ahmed is the best part of Nightcrawler. Riz Ahmed is amazing in it. He is amazing in it. The big, three biggest gyps that I've seen. Not as good in Venom. Gyllenhaal and Nightcrawler. <laughs> Uh, shit, I can't remember the guy's Cake, name. So. Jennifer Aniston. That's a good one too. Yeah, there was. Uh, there's another one. I can't. Shit, I got. I got to remember. Snubs. Are you big talking? Snubs. Yeah, we, got, snubs. we should. We should do an episode as we get closer to the Oscar season. I- I'm yeah. literally snubs. bleeding from my hands right now, and that's what, what you, you did. Doing? So you did it to yourself because you can't <laughs> yeah. control yourself. <laughs> you can't control. I, we myself. need to give you like a stress ball to hold under your. Under <laughs> do you need one of those? Table. I'm like literally You're cutting. Like slice your hands off. Fingers. That's, that's the kind person. of addiction you have to your phone. I don't, and it's not my phone. It's what do you some, mean, just fidgeting? I don't know. So, I, you need one of these. Of, we'll get you one of these. You do this, but don't click it. Just I know. That's, I need a non-clickable. Right. Speaking of snubs and or things. So I saw A Star is Born, and I'm sorry that I, I went to see without you. They're playing texting sounds. Yeah, uh, oh, that's me. I went I to see it. A Star is Born on Friday. Oh, what did you think? Um, I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was, I thought it was really with good. Wife? Uh, with the With the missus, yeah. He's she of... she was sobbing by the end. I wasn't as emotional. Uh, it takes a different kind you of emotional. Inside. Yeah. Bad Boys 2, you're sobbing. Like, oh, my God. You can emotional me. maturity, would you say, right? Yeah. I, here's the thing for me with A Star is Born is, uh, I got that, Roxy. It's a good jab. Yeah. It was solid. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I missed it. Whatever my hand. Uh, no way. Is I I, I am <laughs> such a big fan of Crazy Heart that I think that Crazy Heart is the, a much better movie than A Star Is Born, and I thought that a lot of things in A Star Is Born were just glazed over, um, in 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 plot wise and in character wise and something, and and for that reason it took me out of the movie. So by the end, I really was not on board I with Gaga. I think that's where Beardo and uh, and Cody liked. Okay. Is that correct, boys? Yeah, it's very uh, surface level. Nothing deep about it. Yes, okay. thank you. Crazy Heart's good. That is Crazy Heart's great. Yeah. And so, if we're talking about snubs, I thought that Jeff Bridges not winning the Oscar that year. I don't yeah. care who he was up against. His performance when he loses crazy that Heart, kid. I think he won. He didn't win. I think he won for Crazy Heart. He, did he, he did win? win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he won. Thank God. Did you yeah. know he had a brother, though? Jeff she Bridges. Didn't know, she didn't both. You didn't know Bo Bridges she didn't know existed. Bo Bridges. I saw. Do you know he had a dad named Lloyd Bridges? Yeah. yeah. Lloyd. Speaking of Lloyd I've Bridges. I've still never seen Bo Bridges. Speaking of Lloyd Bridges. Yeah. We did this. Before I left for uh, the screening last night of Halloween, I watched 10 minutes out of the 22-minute video of Lloyd Bridges' best moments from Hot Shots, <laughs> one and two. And I have to tell you that Lloyd Bridges in Hot Shots is 
<laughs> the best, the, best one, the most underrated comedic performance. Yes. When he and I say it every single time when he walks in, he goes, "The guy's giving him this whole plan, and you, he's looking at him like he's listening to him. And he's like, and we got to go through, we got to drop a bomb here, go left here.' And Lord Bird just goes, "I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Not a fucking clue." <laughs> he just he walks in at one point and he says, he says. <laughs> you would, have you ever seen the Hot Shots movies? Oh, please, the best. please bring up, please bring up, uh, best of Lloyd Bridges. Lloyd How Bridges. are you, sir? Hawaii. I thought we were in <laughs> yeah. California. Yeah. Are you <laughs> talking the first one or part D? They show both. They show both. But I part, part one to D. me is a better is a better I performance love of Bridges in Hot Shots. I think That's it's part it. D. Yeah, first one, first one. I love part D. Just start, me just, too. Yeah, just start yeah, at the beginning. It. Yeah, just turn it up, please. So Lloyd Bridges, just listen. He calls this guy like seventy five <laughs> different names. Listen, listen to this, Roxy. <laughs> Listen to what he calls, or how many different names he calls. Good to see you again, sir. It's been too long. And so it is, yes, yes. How are you, sir? Hawaii. I'm in Hawaii? God damn it, Bill. I'm supposed to be in California. No, no, sir, this is California. Well, got to run. Good luck. Uh, but, sir, this is your command. Sleepy Weasel has been on the drawing board for 10 months. The president handpicked you. Yeah, hey, damn right he did. No stopping us now, Ted. Why don't I show you your offices and I can bring you up to date? Uh, you've always been a fine soldier, Scott. Just lead the way. Oh, good God, I gotta pee. I had a better part of my bladder blown off the Guadalcanal. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it so much. All right. Oh, this is it. This is it. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, this is it. Wait, listen. Parcel in the D and perhaps negative C categories. There's also a list of anti-aircraft and Nagajina squadrons. They can send up an ACAC umbrella high enough to make any attack ineffective. Might not have a clue what you're talking about, Phil. Not a fucking clue. I <laughs> have a shell the size of a fist in my head. Pork chop hill. The only way I can get this goddamn tube to stay on is by magnetizing the entire upper left quadrant of my skull. <laughs> you just go ahead and do what you do. Do you have any soup? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, soup. Right Hold on. Up. I love soup. Yeah, I think I love soup. Son of a bitch and shell, it's either soup or duck. Which one do you shoot? Duck, sir. <laughs> Are you all right, sir? Of course I'm all right. Why? What have you heard? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh, it's so, it's so good. Do yourselves a favor. Watch if you have not Hot seen Shots. Hot Shots Part 1, the great... Uh, in part two, he's on the he's on the ship, right? Yeah. And his hat blows off. That's like one. We were watching. That's, that's one. <laughs> that's oh, that's one. one. That's, that's one. That's the end of one. Damn it. <laughs> My hat. Leave a post. We'll come back and pick it up on the way back. <laughs> yeah. Let's circle and no, find he it. Tell, he goes... He goes, he, he goes we can't do that. We're on a mission. He's like, good idea. Get Leibowitz and, and stick him in and have him circle. So, and, and we'll come back for him. He goes, we can't do that. We're on a mission. He goes, he, damn it, man. They put some food in the raft. He goes, we'll tape his favorite shows. He won't miss anything. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. Oh, all all of that started from Airplane. Him and yeah, Leslie Nielsen absolutely. just jumped into Roxy, slapstick you gotta, you gotta go through that. like a slapstick marathon. Yeah, yeah. So. Top Secret, The Naked Guns, airplane, airplane, I've airplane seen, two, I've seen top, both hot shots, airplane, scary movie, naked gun. scary movie, scary movie, the first one, the second scary one's alright too, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, second. top Take secret, my strong hand child. Yeah. Um, what time we got here? It is, uh, you know, we're gonna go to break. When we get back, we're gonna talk about Halloween. I think there's any other news, we'll talk about it too. But there's uh, the Halloween review. As we get back, myself, Copster, Cody, uh, Roxy, Riley have all seen it. We will talk about it. We'll not spoil it for anybody because we're not gonna spoil. That's something we do in the, on the non spoilers, obviously. Halloween review after the break, Clark Live. Hello there. No, it's not late to the party. That's actually from Obi Wan Kenobi. You didn't know that? Well, you should, and now you do. Jedi Council, what is it? It's about Star Wars, obviously. It's Jedi Council. Every week, the latest and greatest in Star Wars movie news, myself and Ken Knapsack, that's right, the pit boss himself, we have a guest on and we talk about everything happening in the world of Star Wars. If it's the movie news, the TV news, canon news, comic books, games, and then we take questions from you guys on Facebook and Twitter. It's a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a couple of years now. I'm still excited talking about it. The fan base is coming together again. I believe it is. I think it is. I hope it is. And we're talking Star Wars, so we like you. That's right. All of you, if you're not a fan of Star Wars, come on over and join us every Thursday for Collider Jedi Council here on Collider Video. And we have an Apple Podcast feed or Podcast One where you listen to it. I like it. I listen to it. I haven't listened to it once. 
Hey everyone, Mark Ellis here. You know, when I'm not trying to clone dinosaurs or drinking in my neighborhood watering hole, I am probably hosting Collider Movie Talk. It's a flagship show here at Collider. I like to say that because I'm the host of it. It's every day, almost. It's four days a week, which is still pretty good, above 50%. You can watch it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 4 p.m. Los Angeles time is when we do it. It's live, so you can participate in the live chat room. Go ahead and give us your thoughts on every story we have coming, because it's all the latest movie news of the day. Who did what at the box office? What horrible red box movies Bruce Willis signed on to? The DC, the Marvel, the Star Wars, the Lord of the Rings. Are they making new? I think they're, they're, it's a TV show, and we still might talk about it anyway, because we love movies around here. It's myself and an ex expert panel of guests, including John Rocha, Perry Nemiroff, Jeff Snyder, and other noted noters of note. You guys are going to love this show, and then we take your live Twitter questions at the end of the show at Collider Video. You can always use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk to get in touch with us, so subscribe right here to Collider Video. Check out Movie Talk, and check out the Collider Movie Talk podcast feed. We have a podcast feed now. You don't have to look at this handsomeness. You can just listen to it, whether you're driving to work, whether you're driving from work, or you don't have a job, but you have a basement and ears. You can listen to Collider Movie Talks feed. You can get it at Apple Podcasts or on iTunes. You also get Mailbag. That's the show that's hosted by Perry Nemeroff a lot more professionally than I run this pirate ship. That's our weekend show where she takes your letters. I don't know if you write them or you email them. You have to ask her. And Afterthoughts, hosted by Ryan Snelling and Jay Williams. I almost said Ryan Williams and Jay Snelling. Would anybody have known the difference? I certainly would. I would have felt bad about it because I'm a nice person, and that's why I host Collider Movie Talk. Check it out in video form or on our podcast feed. Hi there. I see that you're enjoying Collider Live. After this show, why not check out Collider Games, where we play, well, games. We review games. We talk about things, anything that's going on in the gaming world, our opinions, news, all kinds of stuff. So check it out. If you like it, stick around and subscribe. Hey everyone, John Roca here, one of the hosts for Collider Sports Time. That's our new show there on the Collider Sports Network. It's our flagship show, just like Collider Movie Talk. We get on, talk about a bunch of sports issues of the day, and what is burning up social media. What topics are burning up social media? That's what we do on Collider Sports Time. I'm joined by my top 10 co-host, Matt Nost. Me and him, we welcome a bevy of guests every week to talk about NFL the Major League Baseball playoffs, NHL, and the NBA, which is starting up soon. We're going to talk about that. We also get into UFC stuff, college football, all the stuff that's happening in the world of sports. We're going to cover it on Collider Sports Time, and we're going to take the time to break it all down and give our opinions and our unique takes and unfiltered thoughts on what we think about the sports news of the day. So don't forget to join us every week on Monday for the Collider Sports Time show on the Collider Sports Network. And don't forget to subscribe on the Collider Sports Network on YouTube and on the Collider Sports Podcast feed. We're going to bring you all kinds of stuff. Hope to hear from you soon. Hey, everyone. I'm Scott Movie Manson. Just to let you know, if you already don't, every Friday here on Collider Video, I host a weekly film review series called Movie Review Talk. The title says it all. Every week, I'm joined by two guest critics of my choice, and they're never the same. We review the new films. We pick something that's streaming that you might not know about, but is really great. And we pick a Blu-ray for something that you might have missed in theaters. It is fun. It is infectious. It is the Citizen Kane of movie review shows, and it's only right here on Collider with this guy, Scott Movie Mance, Mr. Movie Release Dates himself. Check it out every Friday at 10 a.m. AM Pacific only on Collider Video. Yeah. When are you gonna talk about Halloween? Right now, Mother yeah. F's, it is Collider yeah. Live, and we Oops, saw the new sequel do to you wanna, the 19. 19- do you want to put Riley on this mic? Yeah, you probably should. Right. But if we, should, if we were gonna do that, probably should have <laughs> done it during the break. It's fine. I got a mic. It is a direct sequel to the 1978 John Carpenter. Horror classic. Really? So this is canon, like nothing's happened in between Yeah, this. they got rid of all of it. We'll go over that in a second. What I, Riley and I were talking about during the break, this is this is actually, I'm really loving the Collider Live hardcore fan base now. Okay. I love them. Yeah. Like we have, yeah. we have like avid watchers who, or listeners, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or on Podcast One, if you don't have Apple or an iPhone. Um, and what we notice in the chat room, which has been great, 
I don't know if you noticed this because you're not in the chat room. How would you notice it? Um, so <laughs> she's yeah, busy when we chopping her hands up yeah. with a Batman opener that doesn't it hurts. work. It's her. So stop doing that. I you can't. Some, all right, fine. Let me get you one of those those cube things. Those yeah. Fiddle cubes. Alex, now. can you Alex, can you find her something? She could, like one of those. There, find something yeah, in my office. Like, a little cubes. plushy. Something. Go to she's Jack, gonna just slice Alex. her hands up over here. But I've already. It's already. We should throw that thing away anyway because that opener does not. You know who gave me that too? Batman. Give me that. No way. Yeah. Batman. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. So, we everybody at home probably thinks you mean Conroy. I mean Undergirl. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I um, got it. <laughs> yeah, um, Kevin Conroy would be pretty cool yeah, too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so anyway, the, we're going to talk about that in a second. But the the audience, what we notice is that if for people who have never watched the show before, they they see Halloween review and they tune in and then they go, "What? Who's that German guy? What are you doing? <laughs> this isn't this isn't the review." And I, the best here, part. Why is this guy talking in a German accent? But the best part is the fans who watch the show now, they just, now it's becoming like a thing. Yeah. Like they light people up. That's now. the show. They light people up. I love it. Keep I doing am, It is so fun to watch. Like when you, ever you see someone coming in there. How are you go, watching it? Riley told me about it. And, yeah, yeah. And, I'm, but I'm you, can, you can go back. You can go back and watch it after the replay. Yeah, I mean, this, oh, guy, this they is light great. them up. It's amazing. Title: Halloween Review, and all I've heard is this shit. Yeah, and, and then they light them up right after. And then they did. Oh, I love hashtag, it. Hashtag: That's the show. Oh, I love Shut it. Shut up. That's the show. Like, <laughs> and, the, and this guy's brother. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. They just light them up. So that's and you, that's what you should do is when you see fan. that. Yeah, yeah, when you see that though. No, well, no. New fans coming in going, oh, okay, they're, they're probably just getting to it. That's one thing. But if you go like, this is, what are you doing? Talking about Halloween for two hours? <laughs> I could. That's your fucking it's heads. It's so funny. They, take, they, they like get so angry in the chat it's and they a, try to take over the conversation I, like, I actually, we're going to change the mind from this guy. I welcome it now. I love it because I, I, love, them, because I love what the fans, I love the hashtag, that's the show, and hashtag light them up. That's, love, that's the thing. No, oh, you see, hashtag light them I, up? No, I'm saying that's oh, yeah. what we should start now. If you see someone coming in and doing that, Hashtag light them up, and then after light them up, then go right into. Uh, it's so good. What happened? Right? <laughs> Some guy goes, "Cause all caps." That's the fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this really good? Why all is this man talking in a German? Are so brave. They're so brave. So brave. So there, brave. They are. All right, let's be brave. Um, you were brave. You were not. No. You didn't see the movie. <laughs> well, last I didn't night. get invited. You, but I which is gone. that's my bad. Yeah, that is absolutely my bad. I walked into that theater last night. And I said, "Why did we not bring Makuga to this movie?" I do not know. It was stupid, and I apologize to the fans. Um, not to you because you're happy when I asked yeah, you. Yeah, feel, feel great. Slept um, like a baby last night. All right, I'm gonna. I, there's. I, have, I actually had a nightmare. I have a much different reaction to this movie today than I did last night. Good. In a better or in worse? a better way. Yeah, because I, I'm definitely not the the hardcore Halloween fan, right? Um, it, this is a well-made movie. This is a well-made movie. I can see, and I listen. I talked to a bunch of Halloween ha- hardcore Halloween fans last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, Copster, Cody, and Riley being three of those. They all went with you. They were all there last night. Perry, yeah. who saw it for her third time. Yes, and Perry saw it for her third. Perry, <laughs> Perry as well is absolutely it's someone who I talked to. Huge Halloween thing. Yeah, and then I talked to a few others. Um, and when speaking to, it takes both, a lot for me to like you people. What's that? Which Thank people? You, people? The people that are putting that stuff in my oh, ears. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. But both sides, both but easy to like me, right? Yeah, okay. both. Yeah, but both sides of the of you can see from the hardcore fan base, right? Mm-hmm. You can see two different arguments. Yeah. And there's an argument that where they there are the hardcore fans who loved this movie, and I think that both Copster and Perry put this really well. This movie is like kind of a mixture of the of the 1978, only mixed with what a 2018 horror movie. Is today. So Absolutely. did Cobster and Perry both love it? Is that they were on the yeah, side? Yeah, we'll let of... Cobster talk about it in a second too. But like he he has a full take on it. Like is it better as... than Scream? That's the only movie like that I've seen. Um, I didn't like it. No, Scream is way better. Yeah, Sorry, Scream is way better. Jump right in there. Yeah. But this movie, there there's one particular scene that I'm not going to spoil. I, it, this movie had me for a very long time. There's one scene in the movie that lost me immediately, and I said, "Oh, I don't. St- I hope I don't start to hate this movie now because of this because that was really stupid." Mm-hmm. And there's some stuff in this that the plot is. A bit silly and seems like it's almost a little cliched, but I started to think about it, and I was like, "All right," because I was talking to a lot of critics last night about it too, that were fans and, and had a good comparison of the, the original movie. 
but it's just kind of fans watching scary movies on mm. Halloween. Is this the movie that will do it? And the answer is 100% yes. Okay. This is a movie that will do very well. Um, I, I tend to agree with a lot of people, whether you liked it or didn't like it, that acknowledge that this movie will land with fans. It's absolutely going to land with fans. I disagree with people who say that fans are not going to respond to this. They're not going to critique it the way... I talked to Drew McQueenie last night for a while, who had a very intelligent take as you would imagine Shocker. the opposite um, of a twat take no he had a very bra- broke he broke it down and he's a huge fan of the original he did not like this one he went into his reasons why and I heard them and I agreed with a lot of, of his reasoning but I disagree with him that he thinks the fans are, are gonna kind of really rip or analyze it the way that he did and I don't believe that they will I think they're gonna go into this movie they're gonna have some fun and Riley your take you love this movie I love this yeah. movie I my favorite horror movie of all time is Halloween Yeah. so to see this they go into some stuff that really enhances what Carpenter was going for in the first one that the, of the shape I'll just say that and then it's brutal and it's fun and it's all the things that you were talking about this idea that Halloween is here it's a perfect release window. It was like last year when I saw it. Not comparing the two, but just going and having a good time in the theater. What's I am going scarier? opening night. It's scarier? What's what? scarier? It or I don't know. Halloween? I, I thought it was... I, I, I thought think... Halloween was much scarier really? than it. I, I, I thought it, it was I, I got to tell you something. I was on the edge of my seat for this movie yeah. the entire time. And the part that I think you're referencing, I was all for it. Yeah, this thing is too dopey. It's, there's some weird in this that I just love. Yeah. I just love it. I, what does it rank the, in the in the Halloween uh, pantheon? Well, it's the the second best movie. Oh, ever. stop that. What do you got, Cops? Let's hear Cops. Absolutely. First of all. Absolutely. First of all, let's hear Cops. First Absolutely. Of all, I think it's way too soon to to say something like that. I think we have to let this movie sit for a little bit. Um, I've seen them Let them finish. Let them finish. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I enjoyed it. I think it's solid. Um, it, it, yeah, it, it goes places that you kind of don't expect, but at the same time, I, I don't necessarily agree that it's like what the original one was. I, like you said, it is like a Who's, hyperbolic who version. Said that? What? Who said it was like the original one? Was? Oh, look, what, whatever everyone's saying. Like it's the homaging the first one or whatever. You don't think there's any similarities to the first one? No, I definitely think there is. But right. what it does, okay, what the first, the original movie does is that it takes its time and it's really, it's a slow burn. And a lot of people right. may, like who watch it for the first time now may think it's boring. This movie, may, they might be the same runtime, but this movie runs at a much quicker oh, yeah, pace. Definitely. This yeah. goes right into it and it doesn't give any time to breathe. Not a nitpick or anything, but that's just kind of how the movie is. And the movie is brutal. It is violent. I don't think it needed to be that violent. Um, like, because I think the simplicity of the shape is not seeing a lot of the stuff yeah. that he does, and I think that's fine. But the fact that they do do that, it's it's eye candy. It's nice to see that sort of stuff. Well, that's the point. That's the point that I got from a lot a lot of other Halloween fans was that in the original movie you didn't need to see because there was there were some kills in this that were more reminiscent of what Jason did than what yeah. Michael Myers yes. did, right? Absolutely. Now. The other thing, though, too, is that I th- we were kind of saying the same thing. There's, there's a, there's n- the 1978 version. There's certainly the homage to certain moments of it. Like even the tracking shot that, the, that you've yeah. seen is an homage to it. But it is you couldn't do that slow burn now. And with that kind of budget, um, oh, I think I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but I definitely think you can do that slow burn. We've seen like Hereditary is a perfect example of a slow burn. Like and how much witch. money? How much money did it make? Oh, well, I'm not I don't telling care. That, I don't care about burn, money. But. We're not. We're talking about two different things. Okay. We're talking, right, I'm, I'll talking stop. About, I'm talking about as far as studio goes. As far you got to look at Halloween is a, is an IP that they want to make money on. I'm not yeah. telling you that you can't make that kind of movie. Of course you can. I mean, you can make it good. The Witch is a perfect example. It also didn't make any money whatsoever. You're looking at as far as what a studio goes. I know you don't care about money, but studios do. But, That's why they make these movies. So they're going to make Halloween, and they're going to they can't make Halloween. Would you agree that stop. with a studio budget? Studio budget film. The Nun is making. You cannot a lot of money. make a movie like the no. 1978 version and keep people's attention. I think you can because the movie it was only 10 million dollars, which is still pretty small, and it's got Halloween. That was the budget as, of Halloween. Yeah, it was yeah, only 10 million, yeah. and wow. and it's got the title of Halloween. Jamie Lee Curtis is back. I totally think you could have done a slower burn. Um, I, I don't, don't know. I, I don't think you could have spent you know, that. Yeah, I, I they think, spent a lot of money on this I think movie. By they design, that with this one. Yeah. you cannot do the slow burn yeah. after Halloween Mm-mm. because of the ramifications which they address. Is that you're gonna have to like? We all know Michael escapes, right? right? That's the whole fucking point of the movie. You're going to then go. Everything's gonna happen and go right to the source. Try to stop, him, right? That's right. the movie. So to do Can you what, shut your mics off back there, guys. To Sorry. do what they did in Halloween, where 
he's escaped, but it's you, you don't know where he. You kind of one person knows Loomis. He's going after him, so it takes its time. But this you can't. Who plays Be- Loomis? There's no Loomis. There's Loomis, no Loomis. Loomis has passed. There's uh, there's a there's a different well, somebody version. Somebody does. Yeah. It's, it, well, not not Loomis. Yeah, Loomis. Yeah, yeah. He plays, but there is a doctor. There's, there's a, a doctor. doctor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Your phone's fine. ringing. Yeah. It's, it's not mine. I know that it's not mine. My I wife has my wife mine. has no you idea. Your phone. Yeah. You just checked your phone. Yeah. I'm bleeding my from wife, my hands, and you checked your phone. My wife calls. My wife calls me. I tell her she, every time. Where are you? Yeah. And every day on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I tell her I'm doing the show on live, and she forgets every day. I'm, I'm sorry. Glad. Go this ahead. This happens finish. to me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I, I just was saying. I, I think that because of. But she's a awesome. Bit of, but she's an amazing wife. Yes. yes. Um, Say nice things. There's a point to what you're saying though about today's horror movie audience and like needing to have that kind of thing. Not needing, but. I think it finds that balance very, very well. And, I, and I, I've heard a lot of the feedback, like the gruesome kills. Like, it didn't bother me yeah. like it did some people. Yeah, because you you're, wanted... you're a cruel human being. I wanted them to go further with that. You know that. what, Josh? Uh, I'm going to take you to watch this. I couldn't tell if that was a stop talking or a No, it, it's, I was waiting for you to... Okay. <laughs> go ahead, Ruth. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I I thought that it definitely was not too gruesome. I think it, there was a very specific moment in the movie where it was not gruesome enough. Uh, I don't know if you guys know. You also about, wanted to eat humans like two weeks ago, so I. Uh, the, and you like emotional support squirrels. Two weeks ago. It's right now. I'm still willing and <laughs> right. able to eat a human. Uh, okay. I think that this movie was, I really loved it. I thought it was awesome. But I understand some of the critiques. For me, the biggest issues were that there were some characters that the whole character did right. not matter. Like in the entire Oh, I agree. The, the, the entire it's, character. It's about Laurie Strode and it's about Michael Myers. That's what the movie is and about. They spent, don't invest any, but they don't really. spent time yeah. on some people yeah. that were like, I, that I was expecting payoff for, and nothing happens. And oh, then, that's true. There's one particular character you character never even see. All like, oh, right, huh, what the hell happens what, there? Huh? That's right. I, huh. I, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about yeah. because, but the other, I mean, again, but I, I, I want to go back. I do want to go back to the it. point to where if you did, if you did make a movie, let's say you made this movie for ten million dollars now or or fifteen, could you do it? Sure. There's no way Universal takes that movie. Yeah. Universal's not gonna put that movie out. And then you gotta have. Then you gotta go through a much smaller. Um, Distribution. What they're, they're not going to make if Universal's not going to put it out because it's not like a nine or ten million. Yeah. Out, you know, they're, they're like if you know you look at like when Fox or, or Fox puts out a movie like that it goes through Fox Searchlight and mm-hmm. it gets a smaller distribution and then there's not enough money put into it. But a movie like this, it's probably what costs like fifty million, sixty yeah. million to do this movie. This one? And it's probably gonna. I think you're right, Riley. I think this thing's going to make anywhere between eighty to hundred million dollars. Halloween was a ten million dollar budget. I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I oh, thought you were you saying another this one. one. Yeah. The, what is going to do opening weekend? Yeah, this one. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, gotcha. yeah I, I, I mean, I, I keep going back to it. That was something that the marketing was really great. You know, people were excited. It was, you know, in we were starting. That was September of last year, so starting the Halloween season. This is like smack dab in the middle. People know they can look up and yeah. go, wait, Jamie Lee Curtis is in this. I recognize that mask. And you know what else? There, was a, there was a buzz in the theater last night before the movie yes. started. There was, oh, yeah. there, there was a buzz, and you can ninety-five see, I, million. I, I would not be surprised anywhere between 80 to 100 this movie for sure. I, I'm I wondering how close it's going to get to 100. I think we're going to touch it because yeah. at, <clears throat> not only like we talked about October smack dab, but I feel like the voices that are loudest right now are the voices who are adoring this film. Yeah. What I heard going into this was this is a must see movie. Coming out of it, there was mixed reactions. Yeah. I was shocked with that because while I was watching it, I was just like, yeah, this is exactly it, what I was sold. It it also has an unfair hurdle because the the 1978 version is a classic horror film that really paved the way for slasher films in general. You're never going to, it's like every Star Wars movie starts to get compared to Empire Strikes Back. You're never going to get you're never going to top that, but because of the way that that it felt or the original Star Wars itself, right? You're never going to like, the Halloween is that big as far as the horror genre goes. It is yes. that big with the stuff. Everybody was talking. You can have I'm Nightmare on Elm Street more than I am um, Halloween, but Halloween started it all. It really did. And you look at who's Nightmare on Elm Street again? Which one is that one? Freddy. Freddy. That's Freddy. So Nightmare Nightmare on Elm Street. Excuse me. Uh, f- fucking Halloween. Halloween to me. I always the, keep thinking that. Okay, I got it. Never mind. Yeah, but the unfair thing with Halloween, <laughs> this this one, the second movie, is that people are going to because it's got. 
that feel of this is the direct sequel to it, that people are going to do compare it right away. And that every critic I talked to said he's comparing it to the yeah. first one. And you can't do that. I think that you have to. And that's why I started to come around from it. you got to look at it the way that when I was talking to Perry, that this mixture of what a 2018 slasher film would be and combine it with the, with the homage. And that's what you get with this film. And I think it works. And I think it's going to crush. One, I, I can't believe they, they really did this. They made Michael scary again. Yes. So absolutely so scary. It's terrifying. And I wouldn't walk to my the, car alone last night. The other yeah. The other thing that I, I really love about this movie is that this film is so sure of itself. It knows exactly yeah. what it wants to do. They except, had a vision. That Can I look at <laughs> No, even that. It got me too. Yeah. But then I was like, oh my God. God, I'm all. Yeah. I'm so all yeah. in on this. I can't wait to talk spoilers with the audience. I know. This. Yeah. I, so I want to see spoilers. where they lie on that. That got me too. Yeah, because there's some people. There's it's some people weird. that talk to the like that. The cops said that without ruining the uh, the the moment. Were you on board with that moment? Um, yes or no? At first, no, but okay. I grew onto it. Okay, Cody. Yeah. Uh, once I started to think about it more, it makes sense with the themes of the movie. So okay. I, yes. I started to warm up. And to Cody, it a what'd bit you more. think overall? I haven't really heard from you. So are you a big Halloween fan? Would you, you 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 dug it a lot, right? Yeah, we were talking about it last night. Uh, Cops have said it perfectly. It's a, it's a solid movie. Like it's not it's not terrifying. It's not bad. It's just solid. It's, yeah. a, it's a good movie that you've been waiting a long time for, and it doesn't let down. I, Cody, is I, it gonna scare I me? agree with that yes, assessment one hundred percent. I thought it was terrifying, and I thought it was really. Really good. Well, you yeah. gotta remember, these guys are like hardcore horror fans, so yeah. like, you gotta really scare the shit out of them. And like, it's like, I agree with that assessment. I think to, to me, it is a, it's a really good movie. It's a good movie. It just, it doesn't, it, it's, I remember seeing that first one and being terrified. Just terrible because it was, it was so simplistic the yeah. way that it was shot. But you, I, that's why I just don't think you can do that I watched today it with, again. in a big, in a big setting budget this way. It just it's very hard to do. And Jamie Lee Curtis is she like a detective that traces him down? No, it's just no. Her, her brother. Uh, it's her brother. No, yeah, 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 that's yeah. not her brother. No, it's no. not her brother. Wait, Michael Myers is not her brother? No. no. So okay, oh. so it, they the, uh, they retcon that too. Because yeah. so Wait, the yes. original Halloween. Well, think about who, the storyline that they did in this movie about. They got rid of. Two on. Yeah. Well, two yeah. Uh, he, he was never. Uh, they were never related in the, the original film. That was only established in the sequel. Yeah. Yeah. That's a common misconception. A lot of people. And that's then, why they had that particular yeah. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. Rob Zombie exactly. remade that and did the same story. Poopier. All right. So I was really confused. So, yeah. So they got rid of that. But, yeah. Okay. So, so who is she now? So she's, she's just somebody that was who terrified. has been affected. She's uh, somebody who's been affected. Right? But they introduced something in. In, in this kind of mythology, if you will, for a Halloween movie about the shape and what Carpenter did, he's a he's a force of nature. He's the the boogeyman. So they introduce an interesting thing that I love. That that's why it's so sure of itself. They're like, this is what we're gonna say, and we're going all in. And yeah. you, some people are gonna be rubbed the wrong way on right. that. And I loved it. Okay. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis is such a badass. She's great. Well, that's that's the thing. So here's here's the, the thing that you have to know about this movie is that it legit takes the Terminator two. Story. I mean, it's, oh, it's, hell yeah. it's the Terminator yeah. 2 story. For, oh, and, yeah. and that's great, yeah. too. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, and it I, works. I really like what you guys are saying about the characters because I know that a lot of the characters may not have you know, had a payoff or anything, but I felt that they were specifically set up just so they can get killed. Like, as soon as yeah. some characters yeah. got introduced, it's like, he's dead, yep. she's so, dead. And I love them, that. But some yeah. of them. Did, that did not miss, happen. I know. Yeah. 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 I, know I, I think we all know. Yeah. But I love that. That's a classic horror trope. In yeah. the slasher genre. Of not paying it off? I mean, no, I no, 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 oh, no. Okay. The, the oh, the introducing and certain and characters yeah, yeah, yeah. where you're like... Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's where the fun element comes into yeah. it. And I think that's the whole point to where you know, you're know you looking for this immaculate horror film that just does everything right. And it's like, it's also looking... Because it is a big studio film, it's, it's looking to have those kind of fun horror moments that cops have just pointed out of who's this random weirdo? It doesn't matter. He's dead in 10 minutes. Like that's, that's kind of the point of this. And that's yeah. why I started to think about it. I can't, you can't analyze it all the way through to try to make it this perfect movie because it's not a perfect movie, but it is a fun movie. And the yeah. score is fucking it's great. Awesome. It's great. Awesome. Oh, so fuck. The score is great. Good. Yeah. yeah the, well, the way that it adds new new themes with the old oh, Carpenter mm -hmm. theme is, is great. And Car doesn't Carpenter do the whole... He, he does the, the score with his son and, a, and it, another guy. It was fantastic. And yeah. I thought there were some menacing moments. And the thing is... What did you guys think about the new girl, Andy? Who was the oh, young, she was young girl? Who yeah. played yeah. Allison? Yeah, and then Roka's favorite... She's the worst? Pam Greer. 
Judy Greer. Judy Greer. Judy Greer. Who's Pam Greer? Pam Greer. Pam Greer. Pam Greer. Pam Greer. Jackie Brown. Brown. Woman. Jackie Brown. Yeah, Jackie Judy Brown. Greer is so good in everything she does, and yeah. she's so Judy underrated. Yeah. I don't know why she's not. She more won like Riley the title. Mainstream. She's yeah. the. She is the, uh, the the greatest character actress yes. great. of her generation. Yes. Yes. Underrated in the Apes movies too. By the way. Yeah. She's so Fantastic. good. Um, but the movie is. Uh, it's it's a solid film, and I think that I cannot wait for the fans to watch this because this is a movie I. 100% want to do a spoiler chat about because Great. I have so many questions. When are we doing it? I'll um, skip that one. Monday. I would say, yeah, I would say probably Monday is when we, we would do it. Why? We, you don't care if there's spoilers. You're not going to see yeah, it. You care. No, I know. Yeah. So <laughs> we should probably, uh, you know what? We, we got to take it. Good point. We well, take that's it the thing. It. Like, yeah. I, uh, even though we saw it yesterday, I'm so excited to see it with like a, a crowd. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, it's going to be a perfect movie for Beardo, that. I think, Friday I, Beardo, I think we got to mic up McCuga and take him again. Yeah. I think we got to do that. That's, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's so excited. Yeah, we, we'll go over the Burbank <laughs> 16 and do it. Right. Um, is that? Yeah. Is this... You gonna buy me lunch again? Yeah. Sure. Ooh, Why thanks, if I come, can I get lunch? No. Oh, Roxy, put gonna, the plan I know down. you're gonna get scared. I come. Yeah. So. Um, you can come. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Can so, I do a shameless plug? Less yeah. Shot. Can you guys check out our short film, The Shape? It's on YouTube. Check Absolutely. It out. Please. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's fantastic. Got, we did a fan film Yeah, it's got some... It's got some throwbacks to the 1978 Halloween. Really yeah. well done. Yeah, yeah. Wait, so, where is it? Uh, YouTube.com. YouTube.com. <laughs> Man, I was it's trying to give you a good plug. If you, you said thank YouTube. you, Roxy. No, if you just check out, if you just type in The Shape um, Halloween fan film, it'll pop up. Yeah. It's yeah. great. Yeah, Grace yeah. is in it. It's amazing. Yep. Thank you. Um, you know what's not amazing? The Shape of Water. You don't like Shape of Water. I like no. Shape of Water. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, come on. Who's so booing you? You don't like it or you're booing Makuga? I was booing Makuga. That movie's beautiful. made me cry. Thank you, Copster. It's amazing. One of my favorite films last year. Fish Sex. Yep. Fish Sex got you off. Yeah. Hell yeah. I love Fish Sex. Yeah. I'm sure you do. Thank you, Copster. And Eat It's unbeatable. Yeah. Take it easy. All right. Um, I'm kidding, it's fine. Th- listen, we're going to go to break. We hope we hope we have our guest. Is he, is he here? No. No. Gonna All right. We're going to hope to have our guest. If not, he's going to be on Collider Heroes. But we'll, um, <laughs> we are going to go to break with the hopes that David Dasmashian will be in at 1130. If not, we're going to take some phone calls and some tweets from you guys. So I like that idea. Light them up. Peace. You know what's so weird? Hello, Collider fans. I'm Christian Harloff, and you see my stupid name in the background because that's my other show. It's one-on-one with me, Christian Harloff. What the hell is it? I just sit down and talk to people. I literally just sit down and talk to people about what the hell's going on in their lives and their careers, and it's a long-form interview show. Uh, Originally, it aired on Collider Video as far as the YouTube channel goes, but we moved it on over, and it's on the Collider Video Podcast, Collider Podcast, excuse me, on YouTube Go on over there if you want to see the video and to see the pretty faces that I'm talking to. Had some great guests over the past. Um, and we're going to have a lot more. And there's going to be people that you, maybe some celebrities or actors and actresses, producers, writers, all that stuff. But there's also a lot of the people that you know around here. I could have Copster on there. I could have Jeff Snyder, John Roca, Mark Riley, Roxy Stryer, whoever. And I'm going to find out more about them. Long form and also go to Apple Podcasts and check out the one-on-one feed with Christian Harloff. And not only is my show on there, Mark Riley, the Riley Roundtable, which is another sit-down, long-form interview show. That's also there. And when Steve Frosty Weintraub talks to Kevin Smith or George Takei, that's going to be on that podcast feed also. So if you're taking a long drive and you like those long-form interviews, pop on the one-on-one with Christian Harloff. Give it a rate, comment, do all that because it helps the show and it makes Podcast One go, hey, you know what? Those people should get ad money. Oh, hi guys, it's Perry here, and I am gonna tell you about The Witching Hour. It is the show that I host along with Collider.com's Haley Fouch. It is in podcast form on the Collider Factory feed, and we also have the video up and running every Tuesday for you right there on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. We talk about everything horror. We're talking TV, movies, the newest releases. We talk about movies that are celebrating anniversaries. We've even talked about books. It's crazy. If it is scary, we are talking about it on The Witching Hour. We also have so many filmmaker interviews, really cool stuff. It's all coming your way every single Tuesday on The Witching Hour. Check it out. Collider Factory and the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. Ugh.
Hey, Collider fans, John Roca here. Look at that behind me. There it is, Collider Sports. That's right, that is happening right now. Uh, we started it a few couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. We've had some great programming on there already. For those of you that have already watched, thanks so much. we got so much coming down the pike. We're talking about NFL. We're going to talk about NBA. There's plans about NHL. Golf is in the equation now. And, of course, the Premier League show that I host with Jack Hind, that's been in motion for the last couple of weeks. And then an MMA show is on the way from Dennis Zhang, me, and Jay Williams as well, for you might know him from uh, the After Schmo show. What is, it, what is that thing called? Afterthoughts. Afterthoughts. That's it. The Afterthoughts show. All those things are happening here at Collider. And look, we want to hear from you, so we want you to listen. We want you to watch. If you're a sports fan, even if you're not a sports fan, we might entertain you, teach you something new about a sport that you may not have known much about or maybe so deep into it that you wanted to learn even more about it. We've got you covered. You can do that. Follow us on iTunes and on YouTube. You can there watch all the shows uh, or listen to all the shows that you want and then leave us comments and rate uh, the shows as well and review them. And then let us know what other sports you want us to cover. Look, we're not touching rugby. I'll just tell you that right now that's as far out as we'll go uh, or cricket but uh, maybe in the future if we go collider worldwide that's certainly a possibility but for right now collider sports is there for you take a look at it take a watch and let us know what you think hey guys riley here and let me tell you about the riley roundtable that's right they gave riley his own podcast the riley roundtable is on its new home and that is one-on-one -on -one with christian harloff on the itunes feed for podcast one it drops every thursday the riley roundtable is a little bit about everything it's about movies and life life and movies and everything in between i like to have on special guests for discussions like justice league versus batman v superman for discussions about wine tasting for discussions about ufos and everything in between that's right the Riley Roundtable drops on Thursdays on the one on one with Christian Harloff podcast feed and later on Collider Video's own podcast video network. So check it out every Thursday, the Riley Roundtable. See you there. And the wasp. It is Amen and the Wasp. Well, well done, Makuga, Sorry. as we get back to Collider Live. It is Tuesday. Stop it, Roxy. And. We are going to be joined very shortly by our guest, David Delsmash, and he's from Ant-Man and the Wasp. You know him also from Blade Runner 2049. He was in Prisoners. He was in The Dark Knight. He's at every single Marvel premiere. Um, every time I see the guy, uh, it's always there. Awesome. Um, so this is what I said to Makuga about him. He's the guy that they put in movies to be like the hot, creepy guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's not the, the weird, trustable creep. creepy guy. Yeah, he's like, he like is the awkward but good looking guy. Yeah, and he's in Gotham. He's yeah. in, I mean, he's in tons of stuff. I mean, um, episode of The Flash is Abracadabra. Yeah. I'm looking forward face, to talking you know. to him once he's here. He's going to be here shortly. There's, you know, LA traffic and whatnot. Yep. Um, but we're, uh, we're going to shoot the shit. Roxy, in the meantime, has found a solution to our problem, and it's one Tony Montana. So right now, I'm. Mm. I'm spinning the arms 360, yeah, but soon it's going to oh, go yeah, to the legs. Gonna, you're gonna break, don't break Tony Montana. No, she's like a do dog do that gets the you toy. In the shit house. <laughs> the dog that gets the toy that has yeah. the, the beeper in the middle, and then it chews it open until it gets the beeper right. out, and then yeah. rips and the beeper. And you never see it. And it's foam yeah. over yeah. here. Yes. Yeah. I couldn't like even cow. tell it was him at first. But then you know, Christian had to, had to tell right. me. Um, so the <laughs> movie trivia showdown champion of the world, uh, Mr. Bibiani, is actually in the chat room. Oh. He listens a lot he, to the show. Yeah, Could he, you hear his laugh last night during Halloween? Uh, yes. yes. <gasps> oh, yeah. He we was laughing. Bibbs There's funny was so parts. We were far sitting. away from yeah. us. And yeah. All I could hear, I kept turning to bed. Bibbs laughing. Yeah, he liked Bibbs it. I, 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 I don't know if he liked it or not. I, you know, I didn't get a chance to talk to I him. I think he liked it. Did he? I didn't get a chance to talk to him. But yeah. he... Um, so he he had he had chimed in a couple, like you know I'm in the middle him and my and my wife both they're like texting me during the show I'm like, I don't check my phone during the show um, Are you looking at your phone right now? Right now I'm reading all the time. what he said his point he wanted to make was that the most financially successful Halloween movie not adjusted for inflation is Rob Zombie's Halloween Hereditary made the same amount of money with only one million hmm. interesting so um, and then he also wants to let that really is him um, the budget the for show. Hereditary is a million dollars. It's ten million. Uh, Hereditary made the same amount of money. Uh, okay. Um, Wait, the budget for Halloween and the budget for Hereditary was ten million. Yes. The first Halloween and the first Hereditary. No, the no, the new Halloween, Halloween is ten million. This new one was only ten. That's million. why I've been yeah. like, like what? Uh, man, so how much was the first crazy. one? How much the first one could? How much did the, the, that Halloween cost? The se seventy-eight version. Production three hundred twenty-five thousand. Yeah, three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Do you know what yeah. the, the original Halloween did too? They 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 made the whole movie in twelve weeks, twelve weeks. Yeah. So from beginning to edit from beginning 
of right. writing the screenplay <laughs> to the very end of releasing it. It was like Doesn't 12 it make weeks. you feel stupid when you work on something here. for long? Yeah. Like I've been writing a script right now for two years. It's like, oh, I suck. <laughs> Yeah, it was like three yes. weeks getting no, the script yeah. ready, three weeks <laughs> shooting, and, and three it. weeks post. Yeah, yeah, they did it. So, it's crazy. Um, wow. But anyway, so the, the, the thanks to, to the Beast, and I think Riley, I was talking to him last night. We should we want to get him in here for um, him and him and Roca are going head to head for the championship. Sure I'd like are. to get the two of them yes, on. Man. I'm talking to, taking them on in a I think team. The, you are. Did yeah. you? That's today. That's today. Is there a reason why we're waiting so long? Is it because Roca's working on something? What is yeah, he working he is on? Yeah, he's busy. Working on his spoons. Ah, uh, perfect. Right. Right. And then eventually it'll happen. So, who's um, your money on? In that one, Roke is hungry, but Bibbs is on fire right now. Bibbs he, is on fire. He's, I, he's, he's he, sharp he, because you know he he's all about. Nah, they didn't get that one. But Precision. but but Bibbs Bibbs has done real free for all twenty two rounds in the free for all. Yeah. Beat m- beat Snyder badly and beat Mark Andreco to win the vacant championship. I think you're and forgetting how many rounds in the free for all I did, which was three. Did and you that's do three? Huge. That's pretty good. Yeah, that was your first free for all. I know. Yeah, right. Riley, what's your record of, of rounds? Uh, not very not very good at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You had yeah. a rough free for all. Uh, yeah, career. the free for it. Well, it was. It, yeah, it's tough. I, At this I, point yeah. in the yeah, showdown, yeah, yeah. I'm not Glass Joe anymore. No. I'm like I'm Von Kaiser or like the first piston. He's a turbo guy. You know, you do have a big, you do have a big match with Lon Harris coming up I in do. the gauntlet. I do. You got that spot. So he's that's really up. good. Lon, Lon's yeah. good. Yeah. Lon's good. Yeah. yeah, he's really good. And we got to see what the Harris brothers are going to look like once they play. They're going up against um, Brienne and McWeeny mm-hmm. to see how yeah. we'll see how his brother's going to do now that JT is out. So do you feel bad that nobody calls him John? John McQueenie? Well, nobody no, knows. No. Nobody's even met him yet. Lon's brother. Yeah, nobody. Lon and he, John. That's awesome. John, the Jonathan is, but he likes to be called Jonathan, but we haven't even seen him on camera yet. I called him know what he, Lon what, John Silver, and I thought it was uh, creative, and uh, they were like, look, we never heard that before. Yeah, uh, like, sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you. Roxy. Thank like you. Uh, Riley, as we wait for our guest, let's mm. talk to the audience. Let's get some um, hashtag Collider Live out there, or anything happening in the... Tweets, and we can get a couple. Maybe we get a phone call or two before we get uh, David in here. Let's uh, let's see what we got. Can I just say something before yeah, we go, Riley? Is that the the last like five or six days, people have been tweeting us incredible squirrel, squirrel stuff. stuff. Yeah, the and squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. squirrel. pony on and the, the pony. Southwest pony. flight. Yeah. I go picture. It didn't yeah. happen. And he sent a picture a of picture the pony. of a friggin' pony, pony I've heard on it. an airplane. I get it. I do. I get squirrel. DMs and, and squirrel. The, we were talking about the, stuff all the, time. the squirrel it. stuff. They were talking about the squirrel on Joe Rogan. Yeah, and his like his tweet, his tweet slash Instagram about the squirrel stuff totally backs you and I up. Yeah. No, there and was a lot of people who were backing me. No, he's, up. Talking, no. About the, he's talking about Joe Rogan Joe in Rogan. particular. I know. Yeah, I'm yeah. just yeah. saying. No, there were. They, I, I will call it like it is. There were. It was split down the middle. Yeah, it was very there were a lot split. of people because they were explaining more on what the emotional support <laughs> could mean. You know, and why people. And it's it doesn't more, make it fun when people actually tell you the truth about it, right? Yeah, it's like not fun anymore when. You know that people emotionally need something. It's a rodent depends. that needs a, a, a rodent, a it's person that needs a, a rodent. rodent. It's a rodent. It's the thing. It's like, I get it. I even get a cat. I get a yeah. dog, but it's like a okay. squirrel. Ugh. But why? Why is one animal different than another? What's wrong with a snake? Is it just because there's more human-like on the tendencies on a dog? Snakes off the motherfucking plane. I yeah, no it. snakes. Yeah, no thanks. Just. Just because they look different. Yeah. What do we got, Riley? All right, here we go. Let's go. You know, we'll take a phone call. Hey, you are on Collider Live. Who do we got? Hey, this is Chance. Hey, Chance, what's Chance. going on? How are you? Hey, Chance, why'd, hey, your, why'd uh, your mom I'm name... Good. I am... Why'd your name Chance? Uh, that's actually my grandfather's name. Uh, no, it's because your mama took one. Watch your Van Damme movie, for Christ's sake. <laughs> is this, is this, Jesus, is this Chance. Chance. Good one, Chance. Good, good, good one. Good one. Like Chance. God, no, 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 damn no. it. No, Way to right. go. Just All kidding, Chance. Seemed like a great guy. All right, so Chance, what do you got today? Hey, uh, well, I'm I'm really excited for Halloween too. I'm a big fan of the original, and I've actually got something for Riley. Okay, yeah. Ooh, hit us. What do you got? Well, uh, years ago, I know you're a big Friday the Thirteenth fan, Riley. Oh, sure. Years yeah. ago, yeah. I thought up an idea. It's like, wouldn't it be great years later to do a sequel where all the final girls come back to fight Jason one more time? Yes, I want that. You and want Tommy that Jarvis. All right. Yeah. And Tommy Jarvis. What, I'm, right, I'm writing a spec script on it right now. Oh, oh awesome. man. Well, thank How you. about my spec script, Friday the 14th? <laughs> <laughs> the guys. Uh, thank you, Friday Chance. the 14th is about a guy who survived Friday the 13th and just they live in a normal be Saturday life. Saturday the 14th. He went to a Denny's for breakfast, living <laughs> the dream. Great point, Riley. It'd be Saturday the 14th. Well, I don't think They, made, they made Saturday the 14th. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right, thank I you, hop, Chance. I hop. 
Thanks, Chance. Thanks, cool. Chance. All right, Riley, let's get some, get some tweets in there. Uh, I saw a lot of tweets, actually. Well, yeah. Wondering where your Patriots shirt is. Yeah. I was, was going to ask. It was going to happen. Uh, I, I can't. It's right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fair. That's fair. I, I think the, I'm going to... I'm Because the, the deal was three, three in a row, right? Oh. Problem was... Wasn't smelling great yeah, this morning. Yeah, I get that. I'm already not smelling yeah, good. Yeah, it wasn't smelling good this morning or that thing. So I, I think the way I'm, I'm going to stretch it out. I'm going to do it. I'll do it every Monday. I'll do okay. Monday, Monday, Monday. Because you only have one. You, you don't have multiple. I had. I have a. I have a, a red one, but I couldn't find it. Oh. So it was like I'm not going to stink up the office with it. Have I'll, I'll honor the, it and I'll do three of them. The Febreze. Just do that and then throw it in the dryer. For Wait, five. what was the bet again? Bless you. Almost oh, went away. I was um, waiting for it. Celtics yeah. tonight. Red Sox and uh, Yankees. Oh, right, 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 right. Hey, Makuga, right. hey, 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 get, get out. Get, get out, get out hey. Makuga. Right. Get out. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> David. Hello. Dustin Machine is here. David, how are you, sir? Nice I'm to so see you. good. I'm nice so good. It's so fine. good to be here. I'm so excited. Nice Thanks, to meet guys. you live. Yes, live. Here we are. It's you, happening. Yeah, you know Coming in. You know, what I was talking about, um, what was funny about this is I we, we get a chance where we're lucky enough we go to all the Marvel premieres. Yes. Always there. Always there, and you are—you're like a hardcore comic book movie fan as well, too. Huge. Is that correct? Comic yeah, yeah. book fan first. Right. Comic books started in comics, and uh, I grew up in Kansas City, third grade. I got my first comic, and then um, started collecting monthly series, and then. Uh, you know, uh, gosh, look, I'm like here I am today. It's really yeah. insane. It's, it's kind of mind blowing. Well, that's what I'm saying. So tell me, I want to hear that journey because I do. It's funny because you have such a memorable. Memorable face, first of all, and a memorable role because of Dark Knight. The Dark Knight, man. I remember that the second I see you after that movie, I'm like, that's oh, the no, dude. Oh, no, no. Stay, 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 yeah, stay. But that's the dude from The Dark Knight. That's, well, and then, well, then Gotham. Then Ant-Man. All this stuff happens. How do, how do you get Dark Knight? I tell you, it's this crazy story. So, like I said, I grew up in Kansas City. I was going to Clint's Comics, buying my comic books. First thing I started collecting was Marvel, but then I quickly fell in love with Batman, and uh, the Joker's always been my favorite villain. Okay. And... Um, so then, you know, fast forward, I got very serious about pursuing a career in acting. I went to Chicago. I studied um, some of the best theater there. And, um, and you know, I, I struggled with addiction for a while. And so I had to actually put my, my, my dreams on hold for a while to, to get clean and to get my life together. And when I finally was able to start living a real life again, the dream of acting was just kind of a gone thing. I had let go of that. Okay. And, and, and I kept my comics on. I kept my, you know, my passion for and watching these films. this was back home? When, this is in Chicago, you know, yeah. Chicago. Were you like and, Steppenwolf or something like that? I, 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 I did some studying at Steppenwolf. Oh, yeah. cool. I was at uh, the, the DePaul Theater School. I worked Great with uh, a nice. bunch of amazing yeah. theater companies in, in the city. And I um, you know, I got this opportunity. I was doing a play at Writer's Theater Othello, and I got a chance to audition for one of the clowns at the bank high scene at the beginning of the dark night. Yeah. And, and yeah. I'd heard that they were going to make the sequel to Batman Begins in Chicago. And I was like, what can I do? What can I do? So I go on this giant casting call with every other Chicago actor <laughs> to read like the two lines that were like, he thinks he's getting a cut. You know, he's crazy. Who is this guy? Right. Um, and the next day, the casting director brought me in, and I sat in a room smaller than this, and Christopher Nolan is sitting right there with a the little handheld camera, and I do the same kind of lines, and the next week, they shot the heist scene, and I was like, that Damn. was my chance. That was my... I never got to be... That was, I was devastated, but... You pick up and you move forward. Right. And I did this whole run of Othello, four months. At the end of that four months, I got a call from the, my agent at the time who said... You just got offered a role. They won't tell us what it is. There's, it's complete secrecy. You're gonna be night. a thug yeah. in the dark night. And yeah. I was like, so I, sh I show up to work, um, not even really knowing who I was playing, what I was doing, and all of a sudden I'm standing, you know, beside Heath Ledger in his makeup. Wow. I'm, I, I, I could tell the story a million times, and it doesn't ever stop getting me like right here, like thinking about that, and 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 like. You know, just like looking at my killing jokes, which I'd worn to, like till I had to buy extra copies, all yeah. the different comics that I'd run through and like to be standing there in that in, in that in that playground of Nolan's mind was a dream. Well, tell me about that, though, too, because being a big fan of like the killing joke. And all this, so when you're because there was there definitely took a lot of that from it, it, that you see. In, in and the, the long Halloween. Oh, my gosh. Right, I mean, that's right, right, a huge right. inspiration. So when you're so is it hard for you, though, too, when you watch because obviously it's like your first big gig here when you're doing this like it's my first gig it's first time I'm on a film set right. you know I'm like that's with Christopher Nolan with, with, with Nolan Christopher Nolan right, right here right, right. Gary, I mean, my first day in hair and makeup Gary Oldman wow. Christopher Nolan I mean uh, uh, Christian Bale Heath Ledger Aaron Eckhart Maggie Gyllenhaal Dave the Small like I'm right. just sitting there like I hear a name dropper am I do you, yeah. <laughs> do you ever do you ever though when you're when, <laughs> yeah do you ever like when you're on <laughs> set saying to yourself like well, that's not exactly the way they had it in the comics, but you ever give notes? <laughs> so you shut your mouth. No, no, yeah. because what they were, and and I was in such a small moment in those films. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know what the script was. I didn't know what thing. But when I sat down and watched the film for the first time, 
which was at like a cast and crew screening in Chicago for all the locals who'd worked on the film. And you lost your mind. I knew that his cinema changed that night. Yeah. Like I knew something changed and I knew that the, the comic book world changed that night. And I knew that he had created something that was going to change. Like, it's so weird how like dumb and emotional I get thinking about this, but like that I got to be this tiny part of like this thing that it means so much to me and that comic book stores changed after that. Yeah. Comic book movies changed after that. And, uh, well, the landscape and changed. It did. It and 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 the and the, the the standard. Yeah. For how we tell stories, it wasn't like just put on some silly costumes and make you know. Not that great films had made before in that genre. I love some of the stuff right. that had come before, but this changed the game. It's so funny that you say that too, because in the same year, uh, Iron Man comes out. And, and, and so here comes here, the MCU. Right. Man. Because as where the DC uh, universe is just set up. And Nolan revitalizes Batman because we thought it was dead after Batman and Robin. He brings about Batman Begins, hits the Dark Knight, and the same year as the Dark Knight, which is one of the most influential comic movies of all time, maybe movies. Here comes Iron Man, and what's funny about this is look at now here we are where you're in two, uh, you're, you're in two MCU movies now with Ant Man and Ant Man and the Wasp. Think about like you, you were asking me earlier, how does that feel? What does yeah. it feel like to be a lifelong fan and now to be in this world? So. To the DC universe, Christopher Nolan did something that has, you know, the best thing that has ever been brought to life in the screen in the DC universe. Then all of a sudden the MCU begins and it's now this historic, you know, piece of cinema history. We're 20 films in now to something that in my mind embodies what it's like to be a comic book fan. Because every month when I get a new comic, I know that no matter what's going to happen at the end of the story, I'm going to go the next month and I'm going to go the next month and I'm going to go the next month. Just like with these films, I'm going to go and see. And each time they usurp my expectations, they blow my mind. And it's part of this greater bigger picture the way that like um the secret wars was when we were kids yeah. and like the way that you could see the fantastic four and, the, and all these different people come together to fight the beyond or seeing how everything culminated with you know what's happening in infinity war for me to be this tiny part of it in my opinion the best way that marvel's ever been brought to life and then to have been a part of the best way that dc's ever been brought to life i it's it's crazy man yeah. it's have crazy you, ha, do you know if you survived the snap I did. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no, Kurt's... Uh, this is the funny thing. I don't understand why people don't get that. Like, Kurt's uh, hair is the most indestructible <laughs> thing. It's like, F Thor's hammer, F the, the shield, F the freaking god. I've been staring at her hair for five minutes. Like, it's damn. incredible, yeah. It's Kurt's hair. hair. There's a pile of dust, <laughs> and there's still the hair. If, if Kurt and Thanos went at it, I would win. <laughs> that was for it. sure. Yeah, for but is that, is that official? Did you actually uh, survive the snap? Survive the snap? That was, um, that, that's one of the things that I was told I'm, I can't talk about. You can't so. talk but about you know it. the All answer right. to it? Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that, that's fair. We yeah. know whether or not he did it. Yeah. Have you written like a fan? film of what what happens after the snap to you and your hair like a little it's, yeah it's either Kurt the rise of the, the rise of the Kurt Knight <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. rises yeah. the, yeah. ba- the Baba Yaga return yes. how, how much of the of the Infinity War storylines did you guys know while you were shooting at Man and the Wasp here's the thing like officially yeah. not much but Peyton would give us need be stuff the pro not the problem but the blessing the really cool thing is I'm also over the years in the work that I've done and 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 being in these different things have become friends with a lot of the people who do work and have more knowledge than I do about stuff so sometimes the 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 fan the geek in me is like don't tell me don't tell me but tell me tell me tell right, me and right. I have uh I, so I kind of had a, a and, and knowledge. Also, at one point, this is no joke. Uh, the first time I've told this story, I was um, in one of the offices in Pinewood Studios um, for a, a stunt thing, or something, and I had to go to the bathroom so bad. And I go down this hall and turn down this hall there, and I'm walking down this hall, you guys, and all of a sudden I realized I'd been let into like a locked sanctuary where the the storyboards for the Russos were going down wow. both sides of this hallway, uh, and yeah. I stopped and I looked around. And I saw everything. Wow. I saw like the vision for so much stuff. And I was of just what's like, gonna happen oh, next uh, next so much stuff. Everything. So much stuff. Wow. And I was just like, there are fans that are going to be waiting for you outside. Right. Yeah. What do you know? Did you, you ask them any questions? Did you? I, 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 I'd act like I didn't know what I had right. I mean, so I shouldn't pretending. even be telling the story right now, but right. I did. <laughs> then you get home. Then they right. Now you're going to get a tweet. Tell us what you know. <laughs> it's funny though, because you know, because uh, being a comic book fan and being in the MCU, not including Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasps, because we won't put you on the spot there, take those out of the equation. What's your favorite MCU film? 
Oh, Iron Man. Iron Man, the first yeah, one. Yeah, the first Iron Man. And then um, it, it's, it's, I love Winter Soldier. I really yeah. love what that uh, captured the tone in that to me. And then, so, God, this is really hard. So the, the three-way tie and the thing that is, that's really special to me about the Marvel films, and each one is specific, and I love that they let each director and each group of artists that make the individual stories kind of bring their voices to them yes. while Kevin and the rest of the producers can still somehow find a way to fold all that into the bigger universe. When I first watched Guardians of the Galaxy, it was um, Paul Rudd, myself, and a couple of other actors maybe. We just started Ant- – we were, we were the night before principal photography started on yeah. Ant-Man. Marvel rented a small movie theater for us in Atlanta because Guardians hadn't come out publicly yet, but it was coming out like in a week or two. We sat in the th- this theater. We watched the movie. And there's something about the way the color – the tone, the characterization, um, the you know, the stakes were so yeah. high while the wry humor that I always loved about the Marvel stories was still in there. To me, that fired on every cylinder about what I love about Marvel. And it's the one film that I've watched the most times since it came out is Guardians Part 1. Guardians Part 1. Yeah. Is it. Um, and I, I'm going to sound like a kiss ass here, but... Ant Man is my favorite Marvel movie, which is it great. Really is. And, which it is funny really when you is. go back to our history yes. on our old show we used to do together because yeah. he and you know it's funny we were skeptical didn't know what it was going to be like because Marvel had to prove themselves with Guardians right because no one knew what the property was and they proved themselves and then some right and the same thing with Ant Man because the funny thing about that I visited the set for Ant Man the first one in Atlanta and. Paul Rudd came walking out in the outfit. Yes. And he, and to this day, you can just tell, you probably will speak on this more than I can, you can just tell that the dude embraces it. Mm-hmm. He loves playing Ant-Man. He walked in, because most actors won't, won't do that. Come right. out in the full gear, talk about the suit, and, and you, it made you feel like, I want to see what this is. But the real person that sold me on it wasn't Kevin Feige, it wasn't, it wasn't Paul Rudd, it was, it was Peyton, Peyton Reed. Peyton Reed, all the way. Because... Of all the stuff that it went that went down Whew. with Edgar Wright and the way Whew. that he handled that, t- tell me a little bit about that. Whew. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, I want to hear about Whew. it. So I had like poured everything I had into making this indie film that year, and that movie was premiering at South by Southwest in like March of two thousand and uh, and 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 fourteen. My wife's about to have our first child, and I'm like, I've poured everything I've got in my heart, soul, time, and money into this indie. So it's like, we're like, oh man, I got, I don't know what I, what the next gig is. What's happening? And, I, and I've been going through this audition process with Edgar for All Ant-Man, right. for the role of Kurt. And I went to do my test and I got it. And I ended up getting the, the role. And it was, you know, was, like was going to change my life. And while Edgar was still on, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he cast me. Um, at that point, there was a, more guys in the crew. Um, the gang was a uh, was 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 larger number, so they started lo- lo- dropping characters off, and I was reading in the press. So and so is now not in the film. So and so is not in the film, oh, and I was God. like, God, right. I've got this new yeah. baby. I'm like, what am I doing for work? <laughs> and also, here was this chance to be a, my chance to be not only a part of the MCU, but my chance to be um, to take on a role that represented a side of my acting that I'd never gotten a chance to do before. Because you're familiar with the kind of work that I'd done up until that point. It was, this is a character in a totally another sphere. Yeah. And so, um, oh man, it was the most stressful couple of months yeah. and no one knew anything. And then my, Adam McKay was on for like a week, And Adam was right? writing for yeah. a week and helping change the script and work on the script with Paul. And um, my manager called and said, you're going to meet Peyton you're for a test. Um, and the stress level went back up because I thought I have testing again. So yeah. I fly to Atlanta and I go and, and we're in this boardroom and Kevin and other executives are there. And there's Paul, there's Evangeline, Michael Pena, me, uh, I think R- Michael Douglas was there. And they do this whole presentation and the ant helmet comes up and they show what it's going to do. And I'm sitting there being like, why are they <laughs> teasing right, this right. actor who's about – and then I finally meet Peyton and he's like, hey, I'm so happy you're here. He's like, I really wanted to make sure that we kept Kurt and that you got – and I was like – and, and I was like, what about my test? He's like, no, 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 you're here for like hair and makeup tests. Like, oh, you're wow. in you knew, the movie. You knew you had, oh, oh, that's man. the coolest thing. I was ever. like, wait, you mean I'm actually here to start shooting? You're He's in. like, yeah, you're, you're in. He's like, did no one tell you that? I was like, no, they told me I was coming down for a test. Oh, I thought no. I was testing again. The stress, yeah, but what, what a nice what a nice and, end to that stress. And, uh, and what you said about Peyton is so true. His heart is all over these films, and he is he can out geek me any second. Like if I, he's the only person in that whole world, maybe besides Kevin, that I wouldn't want to play any game toe to toe with because yeah. I think Kev, like I got, I try and get you know Peyton site or really specific gifts or like I did something, um, you know through um, loot crate. I got him this really cool like Modoc ice cube maker and stuff, and he got he thought that was awesome. But yeah. like he he. Every moment, he, he's got such deep knowledge about what these characters are doing and what they're going through and why they need to get there. And um, and I, I just, 
I thank you for liking the movie well, so much. Yeah. I mean, it's my. It, I I know because a ton of people will be like, I like this, I like this, I like this. I just love the Ant Man thing because I'm kind of a mischievous dude, and if I was a character in the MCU, you would I'd definitely be, be in the Ant Man movies Ant-Man. for sure. Where does the accent <laughs> come from? Where is well, wait, originally in 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 my first auditions, uh, Kurt uh, actually spoke in Russian a little bit, oh, okay. and uh, he was this Russian hacker um, who had met Luis in prison, and so. You know, I work on. I I used a couple of friends who one is from Russia, and the <laughs> other one is Serbian, but he could do Russian. <laughs> so we're working on the di- I worked on the dialect, and I went into my first uh, audition at Seraphin Casting uh, in yeah. on Larchmont yeah. with a full accent. I had beard at the time, and I was uh, shaggy, like uh, unbuttoning the polyester shirt like yeah. this, and the chains. You're my neighbor. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we do the whole thing like that. Then I come back and I audition for Edgar. Like that, I'm hello, Mr. Wright. It's nice to meet you. And uh, I try because I, I was so, wa- so as an actor, it's dangerous to want something so bad, right? But I really wanted this, and I wanted them to, you know, I'm not like a known actor, I'm not like somebody you'd be like, oh, I, I just wanted to be like some guy that they thought really was a Russian. I tried yeah. to look different. So when it came time for that test, I was telling you guys about it, come for that, that test, and, and Pena was cast, Paul Rudd obviously was cast. Edgar's there. We're at Disney. They've got all these actors in like a green room and you take turns going in and improvising scenes with Paul and Michael and other actors and seeing how chemistry works. T.I. wasn't on yet? He wasn't on okay. yet. He didn't actually join until the last second. Um, I don't know what the okay. story was there, but he... Um, so. Uh, I, I was in this, this, doing all the improv like this and not many lines for it's okay and like we're having coffee donuts in the green room and <laughs> Paul Rudd he's from the same town in Kansas City that I'm from oh wow cool. worked at the same mall when he was in high school that I worked at when I was in high school called the Oak Park Mall on 95th and Quivira Road I he comes over he's such a nice guy I mean he is the Paul Paul Rudd is Paul mm-hmm. Rudd yeah that's all there is to it and he He's all excited. He comes over. He's like, hey, man, that was really funny in there. And to have Paul Rudd tell you, like, yeah. that was funny in there, you're <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Then he goes, like, what, how long have you been, like, when did you get here? Like, where are you, you know, tell me. And I was like, well, I was for um, assistant manager at uh, Long John Silver at Oak Park Mall. And um, <laughs> he was like, what? I was like, dude, I'm, I'm from Overland Park. I've worked at Oak Park Mall. And it was an awesome bonding yeah, moment yeah. that That's we had. Really cool. That's really yeah. I do want to jump back to the Edgar Wright thing for a second to where have you because he was the one who cast you, right? Yes, he did. He 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 cast me and, and I was I was on a show in Vancouver waiting for my wife to have the baby and Ellie was so stressful and I got the message that he was like, You're I want you in the film. Right. Have yeah. you kept up a relationship with Edgar? We stayed in touch, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean I was at first obviously uh devastated. Right. You know, I mean a huge huge fan of his so this chance to work with him and having gone through that process with him you bond with somebody because the audition and then the testing process and the whole like yeah. you know the situation so we were messaging one another when everything went down he kind of stepped back right. for a bit and i did send a couple of you know messages just being like man this is horrible i'm right. really sorry yada yada and then time went by and we um we have a lot of mutual friends and so uh yeah we've run into each other since then in fact i just uh messaged him the other day and obviously he's done some amazing stuff since Baby and uh, yeah he's, i can't Driver. wait to see yeah. what he's doing next yep. i think he's uh one of the best voices that's, that's out there in cinema so um i i hope someday somehow that like i will get to work well, with him it seems like a theme here it seems like you're a guy that makes you you make a lot of relationships and that's really what this business is obviously the talent is is a big part of it but it's like you, you it's the relationships it's being able to especially in the world that you're in i mean look at the stuff that you've done with gotham and dark knight the mcu you're a fan of it so you can you can talk about it i'm sure the research goes into it you know it you're able to just kind of port, you can see it in every one of your performances well, that thanks, you do too. Man. that's true and 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 again like i could tell when i see you at these premieres you're not just there as like a guy that was invited. You're a fan. I love and, it. I yeah, love it. My wife so cool. and I are like, it's the weirdest thing. The Marvels, the whole overarching universe is we're like, you are like family now, yeah. you know? And like, I have real actual, like in Hollywood, everyone's got friends. It's like, yeah, I'm friends with them. But I have a, like some of my real true friends are a part of this universe as well. Mm-hmm. And so it's really like Karen Gillan is a dear friend of mine and we make independent film together and, you know, James Gunn and Sean Gunn and my, I mean, all these incredible artists who I've known over the years, Judy Greer, who's in Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp. I've known her since we were theater yeah. people in Chicago And she together. crushes it in Halloween, yeah. by the way, we saw it last Dude, night. Dude, yeah. I am dying to see yeah, that yeah, movie. Yeah. I'm um, a horror. <laughs> what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the potential uh, James Gunn directing uh, Suicide Squad? 
here's what I'd like to say about sure. that. Okay. Um, <laughs> really, guys? Uh, okay. He's one of my close friends, okay. obviously. And so I'm, but I'm never going to stand up here and be like, if you named any movie, like, oh, yeah, he'd be amazing for that. He'd be amazing for that. There's no one in this galaxy or universe better suited to tell this story, I believe, than James Gunn. Suicide I Spider-Man. really, yeah. truly believe that. I believe he is a master of taking characters, iconic characters, fantastical characters, myth- modern mythological characters, and the ones especially who are checkered, who are broken, who come from a past that, you know, is, is dark, yeah. you know, characters that aren't just Supermans of the world, okay? Right. And and finding depth in them and finding complexity in them and then and then bringing an audience behind following and caring about their journey, which is what has to happen with Suicide right. Squad. I don't care if they're the bad guys. I don't care if they're the ones that we're supposed to be rooting against. In this particular narrative, we have to get on board with them and really care about what it is that they're doing. And the bond between them even if it's completely effed up and twisted and dark and whatever, I just, there's nobody better suited than to tell the story. So That's I'm awesome. so excited. Okay. Um, look, Ant-Man and the Wasp, it's, uh, we, my wife just watched it on, I can't, I, was, where, I don't know where the hell I was. I got back and I said, what did you think? She loved it. She loved it. She's like, uh, one and two, the chemistry with you guys, the, 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 the crew of Michael Pena and everything too. Have you guys become pretty close friends? You can tell. Yeah, it's it's you really can tell. great. It's it really great, man. And, 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 and like you couldn't find three or four more different dudes in the world. Like, so it's like, we'll be sitting in this smelly old van. You've got yeah. Paul Rudd, Michael Pena, T.I., and Dave Desmondin. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, and it's this soup that just works. And uh, and that's, you know, Peyton's awesome. He's always side coaching. But uh, I love playing with those guys. And um, and I love this movie so much because uh, all the stuff I've been up uh, in, in up until this point in my career is, you know, you went from Prisoners to, to Blade Runner, Dark Knight, yep. whatever. It's dark. It's it's stuff I'm so proud of and I love and I hope someday that they'll enjoy watching it and think it's cool that dad was a part of it. But there's been nothing until this point that I could sit with my kids and be like, dude, like we can watch right. this together. Yeah. And going back to the way that these movies change comic books and even comic shops, I'm in more shops because uh, now I get to travel so much for work all over the world where you see so many more young kids than I ever used to see in shops. And I right. love that. And I love that my kid could watch Ant-Man and the Wasp because Ant-Man and the Wasp is awesome and hilarious and badass as it is. There's no F-bombs. There's no bloody violence. There's none of the darkness that we all love and want to yeah. see in some of our movies. This is one where you could take the kids and it's about family. We're in a time in our history and in our culture where keeping families together and the importance of family and fighting for what is important, it really matters. Mm-hmm. And I think that this film nails that it does and and do you uh do you have any because being on that set by the way in 2014 I believe it was yeah. when michael douglas walks into that room i mean the place just like just as the reporters that were there were just like i mean it's <laughs> what yeah what happens when, when michael douglas walks the first in that time room, yeah, well, you gotta be losing your mind the, especially yeah the first time you're like that yeah it's like oh. right right it's like and he like he's so it was a real stately. fatal attraction. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Bah, bah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I crossed my legs. Um, <laughs> he he comes in, you know. He's 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 Michael Douglas. The same exact thing happened when I was on set the first time that I saw Michelle Pfeiffer come yeah, walking down, yeah. and she was in her you know Janet costume, having come from the quantum. And Douglas realm. is old news at this point. Yeah, but yeah. No, but it was so rad seeing him in the yeah. suit. Are you kidding me, right, dude? Like, we were sitting yeah. on the pier in San Francisco at Fisherman's Wharf, like actually shooting the scene in exterior, and there's Michael Douglas in the suit and and Michelle Pfeiffer in her suit, but. With both of them, the funny thing is the a few moments after all that like insane tension like breathes out of the room and everybody's like, okay, yeah, we're about to shoot a scene with cinematic legends. They're both cool as crap. They're both awesome. They're both so funny. And like he is, um, he and I both love theater and he's got this incredible history and he worked with some incredible legends, obviously, in his career. He's got, so we just, he just tells great stories yeah. and you just get to talk to the guy and he's cool as it. As it can be. Well, you told some, chats. Yeah, you told some great stories here today, thank Dave you. Smallson. Thank you so much for coming in, by the way. And Ant-Man and the Wasp, guys, check it out. It's coming out on Blu-ray, and it is worth the watch once again. The MCU will see you. And what's uh, what's coming up next? What, what, so I just finished this uh, this film with Karen Gillan. It's called yes. All Creatures Here Below. It's an indie drama. And um, my God, you guys, she like blows the doors off this thing it's it's a side of her performance and her acting that i've i i knew she could do but like yeah, right. it's insane and then um i'm shooting some 
secret. You know, it's always like a secret. I was just about to say stuff, but it's like the secret can't stuff. That, can I can I come back? Because I love you guys. Sure. Yes. We'll talk more about it. In yes. The and then also um, when we go off air here, so you said something to me. He mentioned some stuff about being a your trivia guy, aren't you? I do like trivia, yeah. Uh, uh, inner geekdom. Yeah, inner geekdom. Inner geekdom. Yeah. And I'll talk to you about exactly yeah. what that is after. What about Twitter? Are you on the Twits? Yep, yep. Where can I find you? Just say your name. My last name, Des Malchin. Yeah. yeah. Guys, thank you once again for joining us here today. Check out Ant-Man and the Wasp. Thank you guys for joining us. If you checked out the Halloween review, leave your comments. Do all that stuff. We will see you tomorrow. It is Collider Live. Roxy Stryer and Josh McCougar, the rest of the gang. We'll catch you tomorrow, guys. Thanks again. Peace out, Mother Refs.